are, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're getting some weird, uh, hold on here. Give me a sec. We're, we're having some, uh, technical difficulties here. We're trying to get some boy happening. And, uh, well, I'm just setting up the screen geography here. I'm using a little laptop. We're here at Gopet Lodge in El Sabupto First Nation. I'm just setting up everything here. And, uh, we seem to have a problem with, uh, Punk Boy, Punk Boy, come in. Uh, Greetings, citizens of the world, especially those in Toronto, Canada. We are anonymous. Hey, here's a joke. Do you know what Canadian squirrels who are in store in anticipate? Greetings, citizens of the world, especially those in Toronto, Canada. We are anonymous. Hey, here's a joke. Do you know what Canadian squirrels who are in store in anticipation of the coming winter? These nuts. Yar. Hello. Hello. Is this thing on? I can hear ourselves talking but no one is laughing. Curiouser and curiouser. Well, anyway we have been attempting to connect you to Punk Boy in SF. But for reasons unknown, we are having technical issues. There is a great disturbance in the force. Something is interfering in the matrix that our sensors are trying to pin down. We are having those anons in the engineering department run a level 1 diagnostic on the sensor array. This should determine the origin of the interfering signal. This should be finished in 5, 4, 3, 2, um, 2 and a half, um, 2 and 3 quarters. Yes, now we have 75 cents. Please help us. We are all in chaos. What we detect, we are unable to find the problem. Let me send a message to the High Council. We think there may be some malicious code left behind by Sabu. Oh, it's not what you think. Sabu is our mascot and volunteer test animal that we found on an island the last time we took a vacation on the Pacific Princess Cruise Lines. We went on a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour on the Lulz boat, and while in Galapagos, we came across a tiny creature that was nothing but a scavenger, stealing everything from the other native animals. We adopted this creature and brought it back with us. Based on its scandalous behavior, we decided to name it after the pathetic snitch who is the cause for many of our comrades being arrested and incarcerated. That's right, we called it Obama at first, but when in the laboratory, he was tested and determined that it wasn't a killer, just a thief and a complete idiot. So we changed its name to Sagu, after the urban legend that everyone learns in their childhood at anonymous daycare. Something about a hook and the calls coming from inside the house, we repeat. The calls are coming from inside the house. Get out of the house now. We digress, attempting to contact Mr. Finch and have him patch us through to the trapwire machine. If he has done the legwork as we had asked him to, Root should have Jerry rigged us a backdoor into the system, where the precogs will look into the pre-crime database and deposit a crime into the future so that the system will find it and try to stop it by arresting Punk Boy, before he has even done anything wrong. In fact, with this new system, you don't even need to do anything wrong to be suspected, nor does it require evidence or proof of any wrongdoing for you to be found guilty of a crime that has not happened and will not happen because we stopped you from doing it, but you would have if we hadn't. You try arguing temporal mechanics at your drumhead trial, we guarantee that it will not win. Mr. Finch was successful, patching into the machine's back door, no pun intended. We will try to use the machine to determine your location and attach our systems to the existing trapwire surveillance system. Using sophisticated algorithms we can assess the coordinates of the target, and in turn, patch you through to the closest IP web camera. Please stand by. Stand by. Connecting you to the resistance. Well sorry, it's just Punk Boy and SF. But, hey, it's the best we can do right now. Apologies. And by the way, Citizens of the world, we gave you a year to decide whether or not you were serious about wanting real change, not the president's brand of change, which turned out to be fascism wrapped in a progressive package, with a cherry on top. Most people don't for cherries. We gave you a choice and a deadline, one year, and time is running out. You have been warned. We are anonymous. We are legion. It has come to our attention that these nuts start now. Greetings citizens of the world, especially those in Toronto.
Yeah. ER ain't punk boy. What? What happened? I was trying to get a hold of it. What's going on? Oh, did we get interrupted? What's going on? Charlie, welcome. Hey. ER. Punk boy. Your audio. Here we go. Now, now there can you hear me? Go. Hello, hello. 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 There we go. There it is. My check. Yar. ER. Welcome, everybody. This is Shanger's How to Live Stream Show number 88, their master, weekly master classes in live streaming. My name is Dee Shanger. I'm a mod and live stream director here at Occupy Toronto since day one on October 15th, 2011. And on Wednesday, it's going to be the third anniversary of the Occupy D Day. So we're going to have all day programming. So, uh, salutations to the world. Past these, uh, and Charlie, I, I see that you have the Occupy Toronto live chat on. And Punk Boy, you got the Occupy Toronto live chat on? Uh, yes. Let me move it over here or pop it out or something so it's not overlaid on top of something else. Let's see. Move Skype. Pop out button. There we go. All right. Now I can have it on the side with everything else. All right, there's my little TV studio going. Yep, 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 yep. All right, change this one to capture full desktop. There we go. Oh, it's flipping. Uh, let's see, cut there. Flip normal. No, nope, no, nope, that was that was normal. There we go. Now you should see my desktop there. Very pretty. Yeah, yeah, so, oh wait, it said, sorry, we're having trouble giving you the chat thingy, so it doesn't like me having a little chat window open separate here. Close, try it again. Pop. Chat. Oh, I'm not logged in, that's the problem. It'll show me chat without being logged in, that's odd. Log in. Okay, punk boy. Yar. So while while you're setting up, um, we'll we'll uh, so Charlie, uh, a, a travesty happened with you uh, this week. You know, a lot of us were uh, calling the hospital, calling the parole board. Uh, you just want to give a uh, a summary of what happened to you because you you were on the way to Ferguson. And you're in Florida now, so maybe for those that don't know, give a summary of what happened, and we'll uh, take it from there. Yeah, well, first, you know, let me say thanks for everything everybody did. You know, uh, it's, it's, it was nice to, I found out a little bit, you know, one person was actually able to except get through the, to me. Except for the person who called Brian. <laughs> the person who called, who what? Oh, yeah, yeah. You said, yeah. thanks for everybody who called, like, except for the person who actually called in snitch. No, I, I, meant, I meant calling in afterwards while I was uh, detained, you know, <laughs> like uh, like like Jack Nicholson in One Flow Over to Cuckoo's Nest. But, uh, yeah, no, I was, uh, I was on my way to Ferguson at noon on Thursday. I should have been uh, flying out. Ferguson on Thursday. And, um, oh, been, uh, oh, sorry. The, uh, I'm getting an echo there. there. And, yeah, uh, sorry, I just had to put up the window again. Okay. Now it's me. Uh, and of course, I'm a terrorist, so I'm on. The, I, I actually have to get permission to travel from probation because of what happened to me. And uh, now, now, Charlie, uh, you live in the states, not in the old Soviet-style regime where you needed travel papers, right? Just want to double check that to the world here. Yeah, there's not much of a difference these days. Uh, you have to have papers to travel. You have to show your difference. show your papers to the police when you're down walking down the street. You know that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, that's a good question, Occupy TV. I guess that's you, Dan. I, I I'd love to see uh, conservative treehouse, uh, who apparently well, I get to the story was is that I got permission to travel. Uh, I was heading out Thursday. I would have been there till the 20th uh, in Ferguson, live streaming as well as uh, documenting and doing some interviews, uh, meeting with lawyers, including the district attorney uh, on public records and helping train people how to use the public records law. And then I was flying out to Albuquerque to continue the work out there for the two weeks after that. 
And then on uh, on Wednesday, I got this call from the probation uh, saying I had to come in and file uh, and do, sign some extra papers. I should have known something was up. Um, and so I went there, and uh, I got ambushed, uh, not by the probation officer, but by other probation people, including this one who uh, uh, almost two years ago tried to put me in prison after I did three years of house arrest, came and did an illegal search of my house, invaded it, um, did, you know, looked where she shouldn't have looked, thinking she was going to find some great you know, stash of drugs, um, and found nothing. Uh, and then actually had me arrested for my prescription drugs. Um, and then I was held in jail. Uh, I actually got a bond, but they refused to release me after I paid the bond, uh, even though the judge issued it to me. Uh, and then I, I couldn't be released anyway because there was actually no charges against me. So, no, no, no you know, they, they were holding me for someone, for another court to come get me, uh, and they wouldn't release me on the bond because they said some other court's going to come get you, but no other court knew I was there. So I, I actually had to go to a court and ask them to have me extradited. Yeah, and so so I'm on probation uh, like till 2020 right now, although we were supposed to try and end that uh, in January. Um, and... Um, so, so I, this woman sitting there saying, well, you're not going anywhere because we've got this surveillance organization that's got you uh, tweeting, among other things, about you organizing violence in Ferguson. And I'm like, show me a single tweet or any document that has me doing anything about violence. And uh, I got pretty angry. I had my lawyer on the phone with her at the time, and he was a little upset with me because I'm yelling at her. I said, produce a document. And he's like, just calm down, Charlie, calm down. And I'm like, fuck that, I ain't calming down. I was pissed off. And then at one point, the, her supervisor, the head of the, the he, he says, I need to leave. So I left. And, and I, of course, I, I told him off as I left. Um, and then I'm sitting in the car in the parking lot for 15 minutes with my father, and next thing I know, there's a tap on the glass, and I look up, and it's a SWAT team, and they've got us blocked in. Now, luckily, it wasn't an Albuquerque SWAT team. They weren't dressed in body <laughs> armor with their you know, M14s, you know, M4s or whatever, rifles pointing at me. Um, AR but it was a little... R-15s. AR-15s yeah, AR and the M M4 and ar 15 yeah. But, uh, you know, but I'm like, what the hell's a SWAT team here? And I was sitting on the phone with my lawyer, just sitting there having a conversation. I was a little pissed off inside, but I was perfectly calm. And uh, he says, Are we, we, did you threaten to, to harm the people in the office? And I'm like, no. And then he walks away and he's talking to people. And then he comes back and he asks me another question. And he walks away. He comes back. And finally, I say to my father, I said, let's just go. So my father gets out. Can we leave? And I'm like, no, no, we're not done yet. And then, then they come over and they, 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 they bring another cop car and they, and they, they take me into custody under Baker Act, uh, you know, saying that I threatened to kill myself. And, and, and the police report, uh, Carlos Miller got uh, on photography on a crime and put it up there. And it's saying that I was, I was visibly shaking, you know, and I was uh, sweating profusely in the air-conditioned car. I was just sitting there like a normal person, you know, with no, none of those signals, none of those signs, you know, and he was saying I was off my meds. Well, I, I, I prescribed that I want them Xanax, Prozac, my post-traumatic stress disorder, when they almost killed me after being and torturing me, and I spent days in a coma. But I, I haven't taken those months, and I'm not required to take them. I don't have any psychosis or, or you know... You know, any, anything that needs medication, uh, other than for my own, you know, it, it, it takes the, the anxiety level down and the depression sort of gets a little bit, you know, less depressing, not undepressing, uh, I guess. But, I mean, they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't, they don't even give you those medications in the facility they put me in. So they're trying to say that, uh, uh, you're having a hard time hearing me? Okay. So, so they. Oh, so they we, we heard you just a little loud. Whoa! Uh oh, oh, anonymous is cutting in. Uh, but yeah, so, so, so they're saying he he was off his meds and he was threatening to kill himself and he's he's shaking and sweating and I was a madman, you know. Uh, 
because they had no That's color to arrest me. So they, so they stick me in this facility. And now I was really not happy about that. Uh, luckily, I, I had my phone until the battery died and they didn't realize it. So I was getting the word out. So people knew. And um, and then next thing you know, um, you know, they're supposed to within 24 hours hours i'm supposed to see a psychiatrist and they're supposed to evaluate me and they should have been able to release me uh, but i get i walk into this room and there's this woman sitting there looking down not looking at me um and then all of a sudden you know I, this other guy say you know he starts talking to me and he's a social worker who has no business being in the room with me and a psychiatrist in the first place and uh and and and, and so you know the, the the doctor refers to herself as the doctor everybody's referred to her as the doctor and I'm, I'm i'm assuming she's the doctor and i explained to her what's going on uh, um you know that the police came and did this and this is what i was heading out to do and uh, no i you know she's like well did you threaten to kill yourself and i'm like no absolutely not you know and you know she's like are you hearing voices and i'm like no i'm not hearing voices and all this stuff i said look i said i this this is what happened to me um and 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 you know this is what's true and she's she's sitting there and she's uh, you know she's saying that I, I i'm showing bipolar tendencies and i'm saying bipolar tendencies and i challenged her on that and then she argues with me and says well, well what would be a bi you know what would be a bipolar uh, symptom um as if i wouldn't know uh but she clearly didn't um and she's saying that i'm angry i said well damn right i'm angry i said i'm sitting here being held against my will at all you know and um and 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 so so the other guy the social worker starts dragging me out before i start exposing her more but she doesn't know um and then you know they they ref I, I kept saying you know you can release me now and she's like no no you you have to be here so many days i'm like no you have the authority to release me now there's no medical or legal basis to hold me and she's ar arguing with me that that's not the truth but i know the law you know so uh the next day comes and they're supposed to then reevaluate me in 48 hours and you know the whole day's gone by and she's not seen me nobody's seen me so I get on the phone with my my own doctor, who's actually been calling in, who I told them I want them to speak to, and nobody's speaking to him. And while I, I, I'm there, I'm saying, they're still in the room. The doctor's still there. So he says, get them to put me on the phone with the doctor. So I get somebody in there that was, you know, most of the staff were very, very helpful and cooperative with me. Um, not the doctor and not the not the the head of the place but so they get the doctor on and and then i i said i'll call him back once he's off and um when he got off the phone i called him back and they said well they wouldn't put me through to the doctor they put me through to this nurse practitioner who's a dumbass he says who has no idea what she's talking about she doesn't know anything about the baker act and she's telling me she can't talk to me because of hipaa the federal right to privacy he says i'm his doctor and he's signed a release for me and only me to get this information and so she's given him the runaround, and I, I, and then I told him what I learned in the mean, in the meantime while he was on the phone with her. I learned that she wasn't a doctor at all; that she was my nurse. She was a nurse practitioner, which is a real problem because she falsely portrayed herself, portrayed herself as a psychiatrist. I was legally required to be seen by a psychiatrist. And this person had no business talking to me, uh, let alone in that capacity. And uh, so I told him, and he, he, he flipped his lid. He was really pissed off. So I said, well, there's a social worker in there. And he says, well, get me on the phone with him. And so I said, you know, I need to put him on the phone with him. And they're like, no, 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 they're busy. I said, and he says, well, tell him it's a legal matter. So I said, it's a legal matter. So they get through, you know, they put him on. And, and this guy gives him the run around and they, he's demanding to speak to the head of the place and they won't put him on. They, he told me he, they put him on with some young guy who's saying, well, we have to keep him for 72 hours. And he's like, no, no, you don't. Uh, you know, you have to have him seen. And they're giving the doctor to run around and he's just really pissed off. Now, out comes the social worker and I corner him and I say, why have I not been released? And he's like, well, I'll go and I'll talk to the doctor about this right now. I said, and I start saying, you mean the doctor that I saw yesterday? And he's like, yes, that doctor. 
and I, and I get him to say this like four times, and then I say to him, she's not a doctor, you know? And then he says, well, I'll go, so I'll go speak to the doctor. And then I watch him leave the building, run out of the building. So then I'm stuck there another day, and now I'm really pissed off, you know? And uh, you gotta understand that I'm not eating or drinking anything, let alone allowing them to give me any medication, but I don't eat or drink because it's a way for me to say, you can hold me physically, but you can't, you can't force me to do anything. I have the freedom to do this. Um, some people get upset about that. I, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I can handle it. And then eventually my father brought me Gatorade and they allowed me. I mean, the, like I said, the people on the inside really were helping me out as opposed to this doctor, uh, pseudo doctor. So <clears throat> on uh, <clears throat> they, the doctor finally sees me because I had them put me, and I told them what happened. They put me on the head of the list. And so I saw her first thing in the morning, and I walk in, and I'm like, hi, doc. And, all, and she, her demeanor's completely changed from the day before. She's, like, really nice and friendly and all. And uh, but what I didn't say is I said when she was looking through my chart, I said, look, you can see that there's a printout of Carlos Miller's story that had already been run on Photography's Not a Crime telling you. What I'm telling you is true because I'm saying, yes, the cops arrested me. Yes, they did this. I was supposed to go to Ferguson. And she's treating me like, you know, there's a grand conspiracy and I'm, I'm like, I'm deluded, you know, uh, and, and, and I, I think the world is out to get me. And I'm like, no, these are all facts. You know, this is what actually happened. Um, but uh, so when she sees me, she's like, at first, she's like, they're, they're still claiming she's a doctor. But I, I, after I said to her doctor very, very, you know, forcefully, all the time, she said, oh, I'm not a doctor. I said, I know you're not. And, and then we, and then she said, I've never claimed to be one. I'm like, you absolutely did. And then I said, you, you know, you told me that you were diagnosing me with, 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 with uh, bipolar disorder. And she said, no, I didn't. I was, I was diagnosing you with psychosis. And I'm like, well, there's, there's no basis for that either. But you did. And then she actually, again, says, well, you are showing bipolar symptoms. And I'm like, like what? She says, well, you're very angry. I said, very angry? I said, I'm talking very forcefully and authoritatively, and I should be angry. But that's not anything to do with extreme highs followed by extreme lows, which is the definition clinically of what bipolar disorder is, you know? And so she's like, well, do you want to argue with me or do you want to be released? And I'm like, well, you have to release me. And she says, well... If you stop arguing with me, we'll allow you to voluntarily discharge yourself and we can release you tomorrow. And I'm like, no, you have no authority to keep me today. And, and so, so they tried that stunt with me. And then, so they let, then, then they made me go. And then about an hour later, they called me back. And all of a sudden, she's really apologetic. And, um, and she's, oh, I'm really she's, sorry she's about up. all this. And she says, oh, you used to be a professor of political science. I said, yes. And she says, well, I'm very sorry. We're going to let you go. And I'm like, you damn right you are. And then when they're having me sign out, they, they say, well, you have to sign this. This is your agreement to your treatment. And, and they gave me this page that just had a place for my signature. And it says page three of three. I'm like, well, where's page one and two? And so then they give me this page one and two, and it's saying that I, there's a grand conspiracy in quotes to get me, and I'm psychotic, and I have to be treated for that. I said, I'm not saying this. And they said, okay. And then they released me. Uh, but, uh, of course, I still haven't been able to travel. What's up with that? We, we made a demand for the records. Uh, and then, of course, we found out about this conservative treehouse thing and they're and they're focusing on me and targeting me and, and and calling having you know a bunch of people calling the probation office and all that uh, so we'll find out more tomorrow i hope now uh punk boy do you have some questions for charlie interview charlie about what happened punk boy uh, is that it no there we go now you hear me I hear you now. Okay. Uh, so let's see. So, so, and having to do with the, uh, the conservative tree house, like I've been like trying to decipher cause they sort of speak in code on that site. It's like they're, I don't know if you read the post I put on your wall on Facebook, but it was like, 
they, they use a lot of like somebody should and what if somebody did and you know all these like plausibles when they're talking but I think that they usually are sort of reporting on what they've already done or you, <coughs> you're talking about a lady who was trying to ruin you and I think one of the people on that site is actually her like from the oh. way they were talking maybe maybe because uh, um, clearly it, some of those people are law enforcement people yeah, yeah. I, I got that as soon as I started to read it because it was exactly the same type of uh, the same way that they were talking in that like Brotherhood of the Chicago Police website uh, that was talking about beating the shit out of protesters back during the NATO summit in 2012. Like they were talking exactly the same way. So I was like, oh, these guys are either military or cops or, or both. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I, I read a few of them and then I, I, I couldn't I couldn't take any more. Because um, I had well, actually, you saw that they actually, I, 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 I went they, after them. It's the not other, just the, you; it's everybody over there. Oh, they they they, they were targeting live streamers and and and, and, and others. Bella yeah. and John and like they got Bella's PayPal shut off, and she needs that to be able to to keep up. She should just move to T-Mobile or something that actually has unlimited data. But she's needing to pay her data overages on whatever equipment she's got now. They, they they had her PayPal shut off. Something like that. They were they were boasting about. She mm-hmm. said, because uh, they, they posted up a tweet from her that said, oh, the trolls followed through and, and uh, reported me for economic terrorism for, for, for putting up a donation site, a donation link. E- economic terrorism. Well, that, that was a quote from uh, that. That was used on us by uh, uh, Gene Kwan. When we shut down the port of Oakland, they called us economic terrorists. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, because they they actually because um, there was this one guy that was out there streaming everybody else's streams and calling the police with his face on it. Uh, he, he he said his name was Kevin Rise from uh, Murrieta, California, and um, and he's calling. He says, "I'm Occupy." And uh, I just want to report these streamers that, and the evidence of, of criminal activity. And I, I took him to task. And, uh, and then apparently this conservative treehouse is connected with him. And they began saying, well, this is who, you know, this guy Grabsky is. And that was all uh, like uh, last, last Sunday night, I think, or something like or Saturday night. And uh, they, 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 they had a hard on for me after that. Yeah, I, I, I haven't even looked at it today yet. Patty says not Murrieta. Yeah, that's him. No, no thief is allowed. Yeah. Troll you. Oh, like, no thief is allowed. One of the one of the people on, uh, on on conservative treehouse that really wanted to go after me was all upset because I was I was I was attached. No thief is allowed, and he had. She said she fears for the life of his children. I said, for what? For my telling him he's a nutcase? So we need some people with some skills to figure out the actual identities of these people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to get the word out to... uh, for certain people to with, with with those skills to take a look at the conservative treehouse and that that list of so the characters. Is. So this is it here. Let's see. Night three for first in October. Moon bat rally to show support for criminals and the crimes they commit. Discuss. <laughs> Police brutality is equal to Ebola. What kind of sign is that? Uh, something about a gerbil on a video. I don't know what that's about. Orlando free hair weaves leads to excited shoppers, i.e. riots. Uh, oh, they were giving away hair weaves somewhere in uh, in Orlando, and uh, it turned out a riot, they're saying. Basically, yeah. they're a bunch of racists and everything. I've oh, they're, 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 they're extremely racist, yeah. Extremely Women so. Women pepper sprayed a beef store during ext- hair extension giveaway. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what happened in an unequal society when you give away free shit that people can't afford to buy because they're paid crap. Uh, ISIS nonsense. Okay, so let's see. We have to click on the Ferguson one. Let's see what they're up to today. Or can we find it? Here we go. Ferguson, October. 
this that oh no no that's a link to the Ferguson October I'm trying to find the thread so night three open discussion so that would be today here we go who are they trolling today yeah uh, uh, base M yeah the trolling was so bad on his live stream channel he had to shut off the, ch the li his live chat uh, and uh, I just want to give a, a shout out to what the Ferguson police last night did was a travesty. They pepper sprayed uh, Luke Gordowski, aka We Are Change, and they arrested <laughs> and detained uh, Bella. Like, it, it's absolutely insane. They were pepper spraying Bella other, got arrested? Oh, shit. Uh, she got detained, arrested. They searched her van. They, they actually asked her forcefully to shut down the live stream and uh, she was back live uh, you know they searched the van it, it was it was pathetic like the constitution doesn't matter in ferguson what the, they're targeting live streamers big time and uh it, it's fucking ridiculous so any thoughts on that because like we're going to be here for a good you know five seven hours any thoughts about live streaming in ferguson? well yeah the goal of no, this has been a real a real problem um if you although patty had the question for me but you know the uh, oh i think no i think punk has got something planned. any given issue um uh well this is what they said on, this is on their side the goal of a troll is to be a massive douche if you get angry they're happy they don't really take sides in any given issue let us not forget our goal as trolls. Post it at the top just to remind you folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not all residents are with them. Thank Goss, whatever Goss is. St. Louis is embarrassed by you, Ferguson protesters. We do not support you. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm pretty embarrassed to be sharing a country with some of these people. Uh, uh, oh, oh, my, my two. Uh, uh, I, I, I did see the, uh, the story from KRQE about the, the lawsuit, and uh, I've been talking to them and working to help get them some stuff that I've got. Um, it seemed, yeah, it seemed like they were paraphrasing one of your PNAC articles. I don't, I don't mind. You know, it's all about the information. Oh, no, no, that's, yeah, exactly. But I just, I just think it's funny that like they never give, they never give us credit, or like during the Steubenville thing, they just kept saying uh, internet activism group because they don't want to say the word anonymous, or or the the whole first week of Hong Kong when they wouldn't say the word Occupy uh, Central, like yeah, they're still afraid of us. But Patty, to answer your question, um, I just posted a link and it's got a, a you, video. You want to repeat which, the question first? Pat, she asked why I was on probation. And uh, I mean, I think watching the video would will, will, will do more justice than what I can do. But real quickly, um, in 2006, I was running for the State House of Representatives in Florida. And I went, I was already a very active person using public records law for a number of years and teaching people how to use it. Effective and how these are those laws uh, were wielded by citizens. And so, oh, there's something uh, static y there. Uh, um, but when I um, when I got to the city of Alachua, uh, which is 11 miles north of where I lived, um, is, is that is that for me? Static? Or? Oh, there we go. But um, what, uh, what occurred was, uh, yeah, we got, yeah, that's, I'm not doing anything now. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of hits. Oh, okay. Well, what I, I um, am I still there? Okay. Um, I, um, you know, I, I, I got to the city of Alachua, which is 11 miles north of where I lived in Gainesville, the home of the University of Florida. And um, I'd really never spent much time in that town, although I'd heard some rumors about some problems. They, some, bitty, some people tried to get me to run for their count, city commission a couple of years before that. But I had just gotten back from London and didn't know anything about, about what was going on there. And I said, I don't live 
live there. I, I'm not going to run. I don't know anything about it. But when I was running for the state house and I went there to get ballot access petitions on the day of their city election for the city council and city commission, these people came to me knowing my knowing my record and my history, um, and they and they were telling me these horror stories. Oh, I got disconnected there. What's going on? Okay, um, okay. Yeah, they, they 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 were telling me these horror stories about the city having a history of stealing elections, and that they had evidence of them stealing that election of of intimidation of voters, of you know the the black population being treated like you know the, the other side of the tracks, and people being afraid to speak out, uh, businesses being run out of town if they don't support the local uh, machine. Uh, a, a handful of families that ran that city as their own plantation, in effect, um, and then and they were just pocketing, you know, millions of dollars, uh, and and so they also said that you know this election was being tampered with with the absentee ballots, and they said, okay, I'll go and I'll watch the election process that night. And and sure enough, I mean, they were stealing the election, and it was it was pathetic because they didn't even know how to steal it well. Uh, it was just so obvious, and so I filed a lawsuit. Uh, challenging the election. And then that Friday, that was Monday, and that Friday I went in there to get public records with my audio, not a video recorder, but an audio recorder going. And they freaked out. And then the city manager came and met with me with my audio recorder on his desk. And he goes, oh, I see you're recording me. I have no problem with that. But then he, he wanted me to ask him permission and all that. I'm like, I, I don't have to give you permission, but you know it's there. Um, now, what it also turns out that this guy was defrauding the, the police pension fund for over a million and a half dollars and other things by pretending to be a cop rather than the city manager. And uh, so he doesn't give me the records they were required to do, but tells me to come back in on Monday. So I come back in on Monday, and while I'm actually counting, he thinks I'm going to count the ballots and say, oh, look, they all add up, when in, in fact what I was doing is I was analyzing every absentee ballot envelope for, 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 for very, very particular details. And he freaked out. He says, are you going to look at every single one of those? And I said, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I hear him come back in. And he's standing there with two armed cops and the chief of police, and he says, Mr. Grabsky, we're arresting you for wiretapping. I said, you've got to be kidding me. And so they, they dragged me out of City Hall, and uh, I was banished from the city for uh, nine months while they didn't charge me. And then I had to force them. To, I, I, I demanded speedy trial after the nine-month period was over, forcing them to charge me. They were going to take it to jury trial. I had it dismissed in three minutes. Um, and then I was allowed back in and I, I, and they were also trying to get them to arrest me for making public records requests while I was on probation. Um, they, uh, they wrote up a dossier saying the, me and the guy videotaping me everywhere because after that I wouldn't go anywhere without a video camera and saying that I was a terrorist. Uh, they, I mean, I actually got the dossier via public records request from the state attorney's office. Um, and then they arrested me again in city hall. Uh, during a city commission meeting, uh, and that fell on its face, and they kept trying and trying and trying. They even burned down the city hall, literally, to stop me from getting records. And then the first thing that they purchased with insurance money, which they never had before, so it was insurance fraud, was two shredders to shred the documents that they're trying to prevent me from getting. Um, and then not long after that, they 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 tried to set me up on a on a on a on a on a on a bounce check charge that really there was no bounce check and and it's also not something that they had the power to initiate an investigation to do, but the the chief of police went to my bank and got without a warrant and got my personal banking information, gave it to the city manager who gave it to the mayor's husband who put it out on the internet, so I went in. Unfortunately, without the guy with the video camera, because I'd already met with the deputy chief and I said, this is how, you know, I can file a, uh, a complaint. And uh, I went to file the complaint and they refused to meet with me. And then after about 20 minutes of waiting there, reading laws, actually, I was reading case law. They came, the chief came out and asked me to step outside. I stepped outside and then he, he says, you're not going to file any complaint here. And, uh, and then he locks me out of the, the building. And so I knock on the door, and then the mayor's son, who is a police officer and another officer, come out, and they begin beating the hell out of me. And they throw me into the wall, and they knock me out, bringing me through the door, actually, very briefly. 
and um, and this is all on video. And they, they charged me with eight counts, including three counts of battery on the law enforcement officer, trespassing, disturbing the peace, all these things, resisting arrest with violence. Uh, and, um, you know, I, and so I was arrested again. And, and, they, and, and, and this just went on and on and on. And they kept offering me deals. I mean, crazy deals that actually had nothing to do with it. But I said, I've committed no crime. I'm going to take this to court. And I did. And um, in the middle of the trial, my lawyer was denied me in the middle of the trial, which should have ended any ability for that trial to be valid. The judge argued with me. He put the public defender under oath to art to testify against me. Uh, a, a, a whole series of, of, of things occurred. And, um, and, and they changed their testimony because they knew they were losing. And so they said two of the batteries occurred in this hallway, not on the video. And then we said, well, where's the video from that hallway? Well, we had that, but we've destroyed it. Well, that, that meant that they shouldn't have been able to testify about anything in that hallway. But the judge allowed him, the judge who was the former prosecuting attorney partner with the prosecutor, right, allows all this to go in. And um, there was one person on the jury whose son was in the police academy. And uh, during the closing arguments, the, the prosecutor says, we can't allow people to hurt uh, police officers. One of and they both the two officers gave conflicting statements. But one said he bruised his thumb, and the other said I, my head bumped his chin when he was carrying me. And this was the batteries that I committed. And yet they both said the opposite way. You know, one said I was facing them when my and I headbutted him, and then the guy who was headbutted said no, 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 it was the back of his head while I was carrying him. But this one woman thank the prosecuting attorney for saying we can't allow police officers to get hurt and I reported this to the public defender who I was forced to have rather than my actual attorney supposed to give the main part of the case and he said oh no no the the, the prosecutor explained that away and I was like I was not happy about that and sure enough that woman sat on that jury and 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 refused to have me found not guilty of everything and so they found me guilty of those two charges, and I was found not guilty of everything else, including the trespassing and disturbing the peace and the resisting arrest with violence uh, and one of the battery charges, the one against the chief. And, um, and then they put me on house arrest for three years, uh, and they've got me – nobody knows when my probation ends. They're saying till 2020. I mean murderers aren't even on probation that, that long. Um, and so that's in a nutshell. Uh, does that answer the question? <laughs> beautifully, Charlie. Beautifully. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's a Kafka -esque sto story. I mean, it, I used to say it's it's more like Carl Hyacin absurd, but it, it just got too too frightening because what what I didn't say is after that last arrest, I was beaten and tortured in the jail, and you can see that on that video, and I actually a week later wound up in a coma at the jail and, and I, woke, I woke up from a coma in a hospital uh, thinking I was still in the jail after a couple days. Um, so that was a pretty frightening experience. And they gave you that pretty nasty drug which almost killed you. Uh, what's the name of that Alzheimer's drug I think? or uh, it... Back, Baclofen. Baclofen. Yeah, they forced me to take this, this, this medication that, that I had no business being given. And it, it put me, it, it made my entire body limp, uh, it, it, and it caused me to throw up profusely. And then they left me in a pool of vomit from 5 a.m. till midnight while my renal system shut down. And then uh, finally a guard, uh, an elderly black guard uh, in the infirmary, uh, violated the orders not to call for an ambulance. And he called for an ambulance, and luckily so, because I, I arrived at the hospital with, with minutes to spare on my life. It's for, uh, yeah, arthritis and worse, and other, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis and things like that, because it, it takes away that, uh, that stiffness you know, but the point is, they gave me so much, it took away, I, 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 I felt like rubber when I woke up, and I woke up and I was like, I was very dizzy, uh, I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk, I mean, I, I had no control of my muscles, it was pretty damn scary. And it was about a week before they gave you medical attention? Yeah, well, they, 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 they on the first day, well, first of all, when they arrested me, 
they beat me pretty bad and, and knocked me out very briefly. And then the next day in the jail, they, they beat me, t uh, maced me uh, profusely, uh, uh, stuck my head under a, under a faucet, which only made the, the mace go into my throat and, and down my nostrils. Uh, I couldn't breathe. My, uh, you can hear me screaming on that video that I can't breathe, and you can barely hear what I'm saying. I mean, because the, the, there's mucus pouring down my throat. My throat is all swelled up. Um, I, I thought I was going to die. They, they dragged me down the hall. They threw me headfirst on the ground. They, I was laying there in this pool of I don't even know what this mucus stuff that was coming out of me. Um, I, I, I climbed up to try and get attention because, I mean, you got to understand, I was very well known in the town. Um, and I'm calling for the sheriff who had just been elected. And I'm calling for her deputy chief who was put in charge of the jail. That apparently freaked them all out because, you know, I'm not supposed to know these people's names. And um, I tried to climb up to get the attention of somebody. But by the time I stood up because of my blood pressure and all that, I passed out immediately. My head hit a metal bench and then the concrete floor and then rather than give me medical attention I thought they were they picked me up by the shoulder that they injured the day before and I'm like screaming oh you know I know you're trying to help me and then they put me in one of those torture chairs I thought they were putting me in a in a wheelchair they put me in one of those torture chairs uh, while you know I'm still I'm having convulsions uh, I, 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 my, I, I'm, I'm hyperventilating. I can't breathe. And they left me in that torture chair for nine hours um, before someone did something about it. I, it was, it, I, you, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, you know, my two, I, I, I had two lawsuits, um, one against the city and one against the jail. Uh, the city paid me one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. Uh, the jail one, I paid an attorney $10,000, and he was supposed to take the whole case, and then in the middle of it, he dropped it um, and left me hanging, wouldn't give me my $10,000 back. I couldn't get an attorney, and I was not in the shape to take a case of that proportion at that time, and I was still I, – I was still – I was I was extremely depressed at that time. I mean, I was it, it was it was very close to that period of time, and uh, I couldn't take it myself, and so I I had to drop the case against the jail, which is you know, which was very very frustrating and angering. And uh, which police department in Florida, and what are the results of you dropping the case uh, because you couldn't do anything about it? Well, I, I wasn't able to do anything about that. Um, although I did bring a successful federal civil rights case against the city um, and it's the Alachua Police Department uh, and the Alachua County Jail uh, which is north central Florida you know south of Jacksonville north of Orlando now these travel restrictions came about as a result of that case or another case you know as a result of that case um, I was put on three years of house arrest which is unbelievable I mean uh, most people can't do two months of house arrest and um, and legally, they're only allowed to put you under two years, but they extended mine another year. Uh, and then after I got off of house arrest after three years, I was supposed to be on probation for a couple more years, although now they're saying it's, it's till 2020, uh, which is just absurd. Um, and actually, the probation officer that I have now was ready and willing to have me uh, support me in January to have it terminated in January. We figured we were going to wait till five years was over. Because the trial happened in, in 2009, even though all the events happened in, for this in 2007, August of 2007. Um, and, um, but but it, was the, it was this woman who did this thing to me this week, who on the very day that I actually got off of house arrest and was transferred to regular uh, probation, because I wasn't allowed to leave my house, let alone leave the county. Um, now I have to have permission to travel on the regular probation. But she tried to invade my home, do a search, illegal search, and, and, and thought she was going to find all these drugs. Oh, they, at one point, they, they lifted up these little plastic baggies I had. Aha! Aha! What's this for? And I'm like, they're guitar picks, you know. And then they're like, well, what's in that vase? And I'm like, I have no idea. I've never looked in it. You know, it was a vase that had been on the floor. I had just cleaned the room. You know, I never really lived in this house. 
because uh, I'm in my parents' house. I said, that's a vase my mother had there for years. I, I don't know what's in it. And they said, can we look in it? I said, are you asking my permission? Because, of course, they had to have it. And I said, no, you can't. But they looked in it anyway, thinking for sure, here's where the pot was stashed. And it was empty. Um, and then so she rummaged through a box and she found two bottles of prescription drugs, including Alprazolam, which is Xanax. You know, the medications I was off of this week. Um, and then she, so she had me charged with crimes for, for you know, possessing of illegal narcotics for my own prescription drugs. And they put me in jail. Um, and like I said, I, 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 de I defied the public defenders who said, don't ask for bond because the judge won't give you. I argued my own case. The judge gave me bond. I posted the bond. They refused to release me, saying that another county was going to come get me, but no other county knew I was in jail. Uh, and when we discovered that, I had to go and get a judge that I knew in Alachua County, because I was in Osceola County jail, I had to get a judge in Alachua County to order me to be transported there to have me released. Otherwise, I would have been sitting in jail, you know, and nobody would have known uh, forever, uh, because there was no charge. I mean, it's just, this is, it, it, it's like, I, I'm, I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg of how absurd all this story is. I mean, it's, it's like a, it's a bad movie gone really bad. Uh, there's a question from the uh, live chat. My two cents says, uh, has Charlie had any lawsuits successful or otherwise against these rat bastards? Oh yeah. Yeah. Bar. I just answered, I just answered that. I said okay. I had the one, the one successful and then I had to drop the one against the jail. And Punk Boy, bro. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to what happened to Charlie this week. Uh, ask away uh, some questions to Charlie. Uh, well, I mean, we automatically assumed that it was something shady to begin with as soon as we heard about it. Um, and a lot of it had to do with he was going to Ferguson for Thursday. Well, yeah, that was obviously like the, the main portion of it was they were trying to stop him from doing that. And it's not like, even though it's appearing that it was that lady in person, but I'm suspect that she's one of those people in that chat room. Um, from everything I've been reading, and I, I have to pull out the quote. I took a look for it. Let me see. Uh, that would have been, what, Wednesday when we found yeah, that Wednesday. time? Um, uh, okay, so let's see. So that would have been their feed for back up to the top. I wish there was yeah. just like a page that showed like all of the discussion threads. It's like it's just all on the front page and you have to go look for it. It's really, they've, they've got a crappy layout for their page. And yeah, that, that one was, was, was bragging point? about it. Yeah, she was one of them. Yeah. That, I think, it, isn't that? That might be her, the one that I'm suspect is her, the way that they were talking about it. And then, uh, Ebola, Ebola, I'm so sick of hearing about Ebola. Okay, well, isn't it funny how, how there, there, there's an outbreak the minute, like, there's a bunch of drugs to be tested for this nonsense? Uh, I'll, I'll, while you're looking, I'll ask. I'll answer Brookside's question. No, you got to understand this. There's there's a couple problems with wait, the ACLU. I'll repeat the question first. Okay, oh, so uh, it, you're getting you're getting your your live stream uh, tutoring here too. So one of the things okay. that uh, is hard to remember is that people who are just watching that don't have a chat or don't don't have the ability to see the chat with their stuff, they don't know what question you're answering. So you'll say, "Oh, so and so has this question. They're asking blah blah blah," and then answer it. Or okay. in the archives, if you're watching this in the archives or YouTube. All uh, right, right, true. Yeah. Well, Brookside asked, was there no help from the ACLU? And you have to understand there's a couple things about the ACLU. <laughs> it's mostly a yeah. myth. Um, it's not what it once was to begin with. But there are 50 different ACLUs. And whereas the Missouri ACLU has actually been very good, uh, and I'm very impressed by them, the Florida ACLU as far back as I can remember, has been absolutely useless and worthless. Um, and they don't take any really important cases and certainly not anything with me. But, but the other thing is that the ACLU does not take any cases in which a criminal charge is involved. Oh, you're breaking up, what you say? I, I don't know what it is. Uh... Your mic sometimes gets a, a static. I, I, 
let me try plugging it in again and putting it into a different port. Maybe that. Now, which website were we talking about with the trolls on Wednesday? I, I missed that it's, part. It's, it's called Conservative Treehouse. Oh, yes. Brookside uh, says Florida is good old boy country. It, it not only is it good old boy country, but if I mean, you can even search my name in Florida or in Florida Blue Key. There's a good old boy network, and it's called Florida Blue Key, and it ran the state for most of the 20th century. And I'm public enemy number one with them. I actually exposed them for what they were, took them to trial. I won a six million dollar judgment against them. Not that I've gotten six million dollars, uh, but I did get about 188 thousand out of that um although i'm still owed six million plus interest um and um but that's the good old boy network of florida and um i actually proved in court not only that they defamed me but i proved that they were a uh, a good old boy system and a and a and a and a uh, a secret society with a political machine under a uh, a, a false facade of a leadership honorary a leadership honorary that every major politician in florida is a member of and every major business. Uh, yeah, I actually had him convicted of conspiracy as well. Which, I mean, and that's really hard. I mean, uh, I mean, I had to use, we used the case law, and it's Joe Little, this law professor, uh, that was the first case we ever did together. Well, actually, it was the second case we ever did together. He actually defended me on a peeing in the bush charge once. <laughs> but <laughs> while, we were up, while we were in the process of taking the blue key case. But that's the attorney that I was on the phone with last week. Um, and that's still helping me out. And he's, he and I have done a lot of the, we've taken a number of cases over the years, um, to expose corruption in Florida. Um, at the time, my two, uh, there was a blackout in the local media. The national press did not pick it up in the mainstream media. Um, a, 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 a Los Angeles magazine, that a nation writer wrote for, uh, wrote a story called The Dirty South, um, and um, not truth out, but, um, um, oh, 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 uh, another, another site like truth out, it'll come to my mind in a second. They did two stories, uh, but that was about it. That was about it. That, I mean, there was a real, a real, yeah, that's it, Fred, Florida Blue Key, but there was a real media blackout. Yeah. No, not truth dig. Um, raw story. Raw story. That's what it was. N no, Fred. Crooks and liars, as far as I know, have not covered any of this. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, they may have. I, I mean, there may be like a reference to some parts of the story that Crooks and Lie. I think they actually did um, post something about something recently. I, I, I don't remember what it was, um, but but not in not nothing in detail. Okay, I think I fixed the mic problem. Did that work? Yeah, that sounds better. Okay, so what I did was I just switched it over so that it's on the mic that's using the, the camera. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess the good part of all that background is that this week it's nothing new to me what happened. I, I mean, and so I've been through it before, but but I, you know. But as, as 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 strong as I might be on the outside, it it, it has its effect on the inside, and and it's not easy. And, oh, and uh, you were apparently suicidal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's just crazy. Yeah, I, I, the, 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 I you know, and I, I mean the cop, the, the, the they were actually very polite, and even the SWAT guy. But then when I read the police report, I mean they just can't tell the truth. I mean they'll just exaggerate away and make things up. It's it's unbelievable. And they have to embellish. 
They embe- I mean, he yes. was he he was frantically, uh, 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 you know, uh, shaking and and profusely sweating inside the air conditioned car. I told my father that. My father was like, "What?" You know, and, uh, you know, I told the lawyer this because he's on the phone the whole time. And he's like, well, no, you were having a very calm conversation with me about what was going on, narrating what we, what, what you were seeing. <laughs> so was your dad detained, too? Like it, you said he was no, there with you at the at the hospital. Did, no, they, didn't, they, they actually didn't keep him there, right? They just no, they, him they, they let him they let him come with me. And he sat there until he got tired because it took I mean, it was like eight hours, nine hours before they actually brought me to a room. And so I was in this little waiting area with my father. And uh, and with my phone, because, see, they gave my father. I actually had the attorney on the phone the entire time. And they're like, turn off the phone. And I'm not I said, I'm not turning off the phone. I got my father on and uh, my, my, my lawyer on. And so when they did put me in handcuffs, they handed the phone to my father. And so when my father joined me, I had my phone, which is how I was able to tweet out that stuff. And uh, I, I mean, I. The, I yeah. love that they had like that. They did this all like on a manual typewriter. This is amazing. Yeah, that was very weird looking to me. Either that or it's a very, very typewriter looking font, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, look at the odd spacing and like some letters are stuck together. Like look at Missouri over here. Like look at yeah. that. M-I- yeah. And they can't really even spell my name right. They can't even spell my name right. Yeah, it does look oh, like where a did, where, did they where did they misspell they, it? They have it with a Y rather than an I. It, it's a little overexposed there, punk boy. Overcharged. Uh, I don't think I have any brightness or contrast for for the screen capture. It came yeah. in okay for a bit when you had it a little more zoomed in. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, so. yeah, like there, there, there. If you, if you leave it there for a second, you can see some of it. Yeah, that's better to close up. So there's the two. There's somebody who entered it, T- Stephen Taylor, and then I guess your T- Tambasco your, was the SWAT the SWAT officer. Okay, Jeff Tim and, and and Stephen Taylor would have been his supervisor who reviewed the report. I contacted and, uh, Charles, who was sitting inside of his father's vehicle, along with his father. No, along with with his father. It's either <laughs> with is with his father or with his father. I asked Charles to explain what had taken place, <clears throat> and Charles advised me that he was that it was a conspiracy and that his rights were violated by the probation employees. Charles was on the telephone with his attorney during the interaction that I had with him. While speaking with Charles, he said that he wanted to kill himself, and I asked him why, and he said that he was tired of the harassment and his life. I advised Charles to calm down. Yeah, keep keep calm, and, uh, <laughs> and said that he wanted to kill himself again. Charles was obviously upset. He was shaking and sweating profusely as he sat inside of the air-conditioned vehicle. I asked Charles if he was prescribed medication, and he said that he is, but that he has not been taking it. I asked Charles what type of medication was prescribed to him, and he informed me that it was antidepressants. Charles said that he has not taken his medication for a few months. Based on that statement, body language, and signs of distress, I decided that a Baker Act is the best option in an attempt to obtain help for Charles. I requested backup, and Officer Baxter arrived and completed the Baker Act. I spoke with Charles, Charles's attorney on the telephone and advised him of what we were doing, and I explained the reason why. The attorney would not provide his name and advised me that he understood and he thanked me for speaking with him. And then there's a secondary report, but I, I don't know why. There's a second one on the second page. Uh, upon my arrival, I met with the subject identified as David, as Charles, identified by David as Charles Grabsky, who verbally who stated verbally that he wanted to kill himself and that he's been off his medication for several months. Grabsky stated that he was attempting to leave Florida to go protest in Ferguson, Missouri. After my initial assessment, I spoke to him and asked if he had been to the Park Place uh, Mental Hospital before, and he stated that he had. At that time, he was transported to Park Place under a Baker Act due to the fact that he had made numerous threats and that he wanted to take his own life. He was transported without any further incident and cooperated completely. This report is inactive and forwarded to records. Lovely. Yeah, it was just crazy. 
you know, and then, you know, and I told you the story about the, the doctor who wasn't a doctor and, and of course, all the yeah, problems I mean, in general, in general, like nine times out of ten, you're fine with a nurse practitioner, but not if they're deceiving you that they're, that they're not a doctor. Right. And also not in the Baker Act because you have, you have to be evaluated by a psychiatrist in order for them to release you or maintain your custody. Well, uh, psychiatrists are already kind of sketchy doctors to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, I mean, I, I, it was funny because she goes, like they, all, they all wanted to give me medication growing up. And, <clears throat> you know, she's, she's going to me, you know, I said, look, I'm not going to talk to you now that I've proven you're not a psychiatrist. I'm not going to talk to you about, I'm not going to answer your questions. I, I want to see a psychiatrist. So she's like, well, we got to, you know, in order to release you, we got to ask you, are you hearing voices? I, and I go to her, I go, I hear you right now. <laughs> It, I mean, I got to find some humor in it. Uh, but so yeah, your voices in your head. It's like, well, yes, it's called thought. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I and of course, when they when when I saw this thing saying I'm going to they wanted me to sign saying that I can consent to uh, treatment for psychosis for saying there's a conspiracy against me. And of course, my lawyer says, "Well, you know, Charlie, there is." And I'm like, "Well, I understand. There's a, you know, there are more than two people uh, consciously working together to arrest me. But what they're thinking is, you know, this, you know, conspiracy of, you know, some guy who's, you know, deluded and and thinks, you know, the the, the walls are talking and 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 you know, the, there's 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 you know, signals coming through the fillings in his teeth. You know, that's how they were trying to treat it. And I'm like, I so I never ever used those words. And I'm like, well, where are these?" words coming from and of course i when i see the police report it's in there and oh, oh yeah i i told the i told the cop coming from the dsm from the dsm <laughs> oh yeah 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 um, no, just, so yeah, if, if 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 you ever have to prove that there's a conspiracy against you, just bring up that conservative treehouse. They're obviously conspiring over there. Oh yeah, yeah. But I didn't even know about what was going on. I mean, I only saw that yesterday when I got out and I looked online, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, because I saw Carlos did an updated story. Because um, apparently, a lot of people were seeing that conservative treehouse thing and we were making comments about it. Uh, in the comments on the original story he wrote and then uh, on Twitter and then uh, on face- Facebook and everywhere else that people had seen it. I revived my like my, my anonymous crew's uh, Twitter feed just to like send that out to like Bella and the other people who were being trolled. Oh, reminds me, I got to send it out to Melvin too to occupy the mob. It's too bad you don't get to meet Bella and Melvin. Like they're two, two of my favorite people from Oakland. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm very disappointed. I'm not out there right now, and um, you know we're we're gonna see what we can do about at least getting me out to Albuquerque. And then uh, some people actually wanted me to speak on October 22nd in California. Um, and then you know if I can travel, I'll, I may go out there too. And then I'm gonna see if on the way back I can go back through St. Louis. Although my my father really doesn't want me. He's like they're gonna shoot you. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't think so, but. No, um, hopefully John will be there. Like, like John has been treated very well every time he's been there. You Reb Revolutionary Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. like Bella and Bella and Melvin will have no problem. Like they they'll, they'll fit in racially. Like, right. Like John like was worried. John was, you know, partially worried. I think the first day when he went out there. But like, no, they're they're all very cool. Like, oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I my father thinks not the not the that the people, but the police will shoot me. <laughs> I know you're not black. Well, they, they'll shoot anybody. They, they they don't mind shooting people. They like it. I mean, that, and that really is scary because some of these people really do. Um, it, and of course, you saw the thing about the guy from that that shot James Boyd, and this from the public record stuff that I was able to release. You know, right. where you can barely hear it, but it almost sounds like. And somebody in the police department oh, really booyah. thought. That well, no, have- not the booyah. Not the booyah, that, 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 that two hours before he shot him, the guy who shot him says, I'm going to shoot him in the penis with a shotgun. Okay. Did they? Well, they said, he did say, I'm going to shoot him, and then there's a, a word, 
Uh, and it sounds like pecker or penis, but it's not really sure. Nobody's really sure. I mean, it's very hard. If you if you go to photography is not a crime. I've got the audio and and that even that they enhanced themselves as well as the interview uh, that they did with the cop that was told this by the shooter, and. Um, and uh, so and they thought he said something like that, and he admitted to saying something like that, but saying it was just locker room banter. But he clearly does say, you know, two hours before even, you know, uh, uh, shooting him, but, but b before he even sees him or even has an assessment of the situation that he's going to shoot him. He does say that, and that's you don't you don't need the more you know sensational thing. That's enough to charge him and convict him with first degree murder. Oh, I was going to ask you too. Like, are you the one that's editing together your uh, your Occupy TV show, or is somebody helping you with editing? Oh, I, I could use any help. I've done it all myself, so I could use help of okay. anybody out uh, there. What I was going to do was give you access. I was going to put a folder up in my mega account um, that has all of the things that I've been using as background music oh, on, cool. on my show so that you have some background music to use for, the, for your stuff. Oh, that, that would be great. Oh, and, and listen, uh, Frank Boy, I, I have to say that I, I was so uh, flattered by the – by the 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 montage you put together the other night, I listened to it uh, yesterday, and with with all my speeches and things like that, I, I really it was limited uh, to what was up on YouTube. But yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I've said a lot more than just that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There were lots of them, and so, some of them are just so like I don't know. It's like a lot of the places you gave interviews to seemed like it was weird public access that they had no equipment or something. So oh, yeah. A lot of them were like really, really bad quality that, that were just. Uh, There's one of them I used that was just like so. The audio was so bad, but it was like I liked what it said, so I used it. But there's a but there's a couple more that I wanted to use that I just couldn't. And it did. I don't. I think I ended up getting that up till cause it took me a lot longer than I expected. I was like, oh, they're big long speeches. I just take four or five of them together. But <laughs> yeah, it took till about ten, ten thirty. I think that on Friday when it finally got posted. And of course, you started off with the guy from London, who's one of my favorites. The guy with the bull. Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> oh, he's just too. He's just. I, he's he's so perfect. And I had found the soundtrack from We Are Legion, so I put that over the uh, what was it the uh, the B board uh, music from from that. Yeah, so it was uh, uh, We Are in the Halls of B. It was called. Yeah, cool. Um, my two cent ask a question about the Von Von der Ritt. Oh, you were going to play something. Go ahead, please. Uh, this, is, this is the song I used when I played him. Yeah, that's a cool song. And it was, what is it called? It's called, uh, I've got him here. Not bad, just not a license to kill. Oh, it's called Don't Panic, Everything is Fine. Or no, yes. Everything is Okay. This Don't guy. Panic, right. Everything you read in the mainstream media is 100% true. Please, go back to your job. If you have not got the job, you are a worthless human being. Consume, consume, consume until we have no planet left to consume. Yeah, he's great. And I, the first time I remember actually hearing him until I came across that when I was searching. Actually, he came up when I was searching for your name for some reason. I don't know why. Um, oh, because but, yeah, I, I, cause I, cause I put it up on YouTube but under my account as well to share it. Oh, okay. So that's why I came up when I was for you. Um, but I've seen him just the part where he's like, I'm not protesting. I give hugs. And when I'm, I'm here to give people hugs and he tried to hug the cop, um, yeah. that – clip is used in that trailer for Everyday Resistance, for the, the movie about the global protest movements. Um, so that was the only place I had seen that before. And you know, like I, I found that during a search for you, and I was like, this guy's voice sounds really familiar. And then they got up to the point where he tries to hug the cop, and I was like, oh, oh, oh now I remember I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a brilliant video. And he's got a lot of those videos, too, but that one was the best one of all. You know, right at the height of Occupy and 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 all that. And he's just he's out there and and he's like, look at them. The, he's at Canary Wharf, you know, in the East End of London, in the business district. And he's like, these these are private cops, but they're wearing uniforms that look just like the regular police uniforms. And he, which here in San Francisco, you can actually 
hire a cop to do your private security, but they still have all the rights that the cops are afforded. So, like, they're enforcing your corporate policy as a police officer. Well, yeah, and it's and I think that's the case that my two was just referring to. Is that the case that uh, the, the 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 guy that shot that had the sandwich the other night it was shot by an off duty cop, off duty St. Louis ice cop. cream sandwich. Seventeen oh, times. Ice cream sandwich? Well, they shot he sixteen. Well, ice cream, ice cream now, sandwich. now, Charlie, I wanted to ask you sixteen times. The guy was eighteen year old Von Myers. Derek, uh, Wednesday night early. Uh, <coughs> He had an ice cream sandwich. He was shot by an off-duty cop. We still don't know his name. Uh, and uh, right away, the mainstream media reported he had a gun. He had a gun. When the live streamers ended up shortly thereafter, witnesses says he had no gun. He had no hoodies. Uh, you know, they tried to plant a gun. But mainstream media right away started doing the spin that he had a gun, which is not true. Plus, as I understand this, he was an off-duty cop. And I believe he was serving uh, a second job as a security guard. Now, why the hell he was stopping this guy? I don't know. Von Derek uh, Myers. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and I, I want to give a shout out to Global Rev and Rise for restreaming us live at Global Revolution. Yar. Oh, Global Revon, are they, are they uh, uh, mirroring us? Yes, they are. Oh, hey, hey, guys oh, over that, there. Is it Rise? Is that Rise doing it tonight? Uh, Winston, no, I never heard why this officer stopped uh, Von Derek Myers uh, and why he emptied 16 rounds. Now, those guns, do they have 16 rounds or did he have to uh, uh, change clips? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that there are some guns that, that have, I think, about 16 and then one in the chamber, I believe. And so he may that 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 may have been why. But you see, but people are just now learning, you know, is something that I started learning back in the, in, in the mid 2000s when I st when they first when they threatened to tase me if I didn't stand up and I'm like you're going to tase me if I don't stand up and I started learning that they're using tasers uh, not instead of guns uh, as less lethal force but as instruments to com demand compliance and I started really investigating this this compliance mentality they demand absolute compliance which is why you see these videos of the people stopped for not wearing a seatbelt and them smashing the window and tasing the people or shooting the guy who went in to get his light I mean they demand absolute compliance and they're being taught that this is appropriate, not by actual law and not by written policy, but by informal procedures and norms within departments that the unions and the and the police industry have over the past twenty years been sort of inculcating in. And so they they shoot to kill, and they say we don't shoot to wound, and we don't shoot to stop, we shoot to kill. But that's not what the law is. And when they shoot to kill, they unload their magazine and they make sure the person is dead on the ground. And that's why these things are happening. And people are only now starting to see it. And don't forget, once they're dead, they <coughs> taser them, or like in Albuquerque, the homeless guy, they they the attack dog on him, like it's insane. Yeah, shot him with bean bags. Yeah. Now, maybe uh, this is a good time. You've been working with a lot of groups in Albuquerque. You've been working for the last month plus getting police rec public police records from the police department. And specifically, you've been working with the people of Ferguson. You want to explain that and why a lot of the stuff about Mike Brown's killing, which happened on August 9th of this year, uh, why a lot of that stuff hasn't been made public. So maybe talk about that, Charlie, because that's your expertise amongst others. Well, um, you know, the public records law, uh, er almost every state has one, and every state is different, but they they tend to be almost identical in, 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 in major portions. There's some slight differences. In the, are there criminal penalties for not complying? Uh, what are the exemptions? Every state has a different set of exemptions. But the public records law basically entitles any member of the public to request a record, and any document that a city government or a or a state government entity um, has 
um, is supposed to be deemed to be open to the public to see unless there's a specific statute exempting that particular type of document. And all you have to do is request it. And they're supposed to produce it and produce it almost immediately. And um, that's what I was working on in Albuquerque in particular, trying to teach people how to use it, trying to tell people that the law exists, uh, and, and actually doing a lot of these requests myself. And I was the one who forced them to give the Boyd videos up when they refused it to the TV station. And I also got these videos and all these internal interviews for the officer involved shooting investigation. And I began putting them up and that's where all this stuff for a lot of the more recent revelations, like the, uh, the, the penis shooting and all that, it comes from those, the, those documents that I forced them to give. Um, and, and really by persistence and by, by knowing these laws. And when uh, Ferguson occurred and I heard the ACLU had filed a uh, request for the, for the incident report and I heard they were denied uh, based on the same claim that they denied the uh, Boyd videos on in Albuquerque, I knew that that wasn't uh, real. So it wasn't likely to be real. I, I'd heard these excuses before. So I went and researched Missouri's law and found out, sure enough, there is no exemption that they're relying on. And I demanded that they give it to me. And I wrote a, basically a treatise on the law in my request. And I said, you need to give it. And then I asked uh, a bunch of other people in the public to make the same request. And we got about 160 people requesting it. That's the first time I ever tried that. And I think we need to do more of that. I, I'd like to get a thousand people making requests in Ferguson um, because that will prove that these are records that are needed for the public interest. And that w should undo a lot of the games that they play. But I forced them to release the incident report in the Mike Brown shooting. Uh, and but, but what they did was they created a new one with no information. <laughs> and then the, then Ferguson created one that they said didn't even exist, that did exist, but they redacted out all the information. And so we've been going around in circles ever since then. And I've been getting other, uh, you know, uh, other <laughs> records that, you know, I, to, to, to look around it, you know, other incident reports. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I finally, they're now going to give me videos from the lapel cameras from, from recent arrests and from the protests and, and they, but they've tried every trick in the book, but I've seen it all before. I mean, they actually, I proved a couple weeks ago that they were saying that the department of justice had all the records. We can't give you anything until next month sometime. Uh, and, and I said, I, I know that's a lie. And then I proved it was a lie by talking to the department of justice directly. And they said, no, we don't have the records and nothing in our investigation prohibits them from following the state law. And so I, I caught them on that, which is actually what I was supposed to meet on Wednesday with, with the district attorney's office to, 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 to try and bring criminal charges because it's a, it's, it's a misdemeanor, but it's still a crime. And, um, and then more recently, uh, with the videos, they told me, well, we, after they actually said that they were going to produce videos, I, I, they, they said, come in and view them. And I said, well, I want them on disc, but I'm going to send someone to view them because they knew I was in Florida. So they figured that this was going to be, uh, you know, a, 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 a trick. So I sent someone in and they said, oh, no, we don't don't have the ability to view them yet. We have equipment that we have to get, and it has to be installed. And I knew that was untrue, too. I said, well, that's okay. Then just give me the disc, because that's really all I want. Oh, well, we don't have that equipment, and that's not installed. So why don't you fly out here and view them? I said, well, I thought you, you couldn't view them. So then I, I, I talked to the representatives of both companies that donated the cameras and found out that, sure enough, they had all the equipment, and they knew how to use it, and they could use it all along. In fact, all they needed was a cable. Uh, and then I actually sent them, <laughs> I actually sent them the manuals to the cameras. And so then now they finally get come back. So I caught them in another lie. Um, and my two cents asked me a question if I'm a lawyer. Um, I actually have a legal education, advanced law degrees, a, a LLM and PhD level work from the University of College London where I actually taught in the faculty of law. I taught jurisprudence there, but I don't practice law. Um, <coughs> I study law. I study the history and philosophy of law and um, and how to use the law properly as opposed to how to make a living, unfortunately, by being a lawyer. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to Activist World News Now, which is also restreaming us. Yar, oh. thank you, Resist Now. Thank you, Carl. Oh. Lyle. Mr. DC Lad.
So I think Punk Boy was going to try and play something there. I thought, or was Punk that Boy. just somebody in the background? Oh no, I'm just putting I'm just putting like visuals in the background. This is like the Missouri Sunshine Law, and I was playing some uh, Ferguson footage in the I background. Love it. It's a little uh, blurry. Okay. Well, it's because it's so tiny on the screen. Uh, Openness yeah. in government. It is the public policy of the, of the state that meetings, records, votes, actions, and deliberation of public governmental bodies shall be open to the public, something otherwise, unless otherwise provided by law. It must be read broadly to favor openness. Exceptions must be read narrowly. Yeah, and, now, and also and the for the people listening, the state look, government. you know, I, I'd like to get as many of the people listening who are willing to do this because all you have to do is use your email. Um, I want to get not only hundreds of people, but I want to get thousands of people making requests for records because then they're so going to be really put into a corner. So does this include like also like mayor's correspondence with, with contractors and stuff Absolutely. like that? Uh, there okay, are there's, a, there's a bitch here who's not really an official of anything of the city who basically her and one of the ex mayors sort of run all of the business in the city, even though they don't really hold any office anymore. And well, she's she, she's sort of a liaison between the shadiness of this city and the Chinese Communist Party. Um, well, if she holds, who, a, if she when, holds when they, an official position, then you can get her she's emails. The unof, she's the unofficial head of the Chinese uh Chamber of Commerce here, which is not okay. even a real, which is not even well, a real if, position. If she, but she can, if she, but she if tells she, the mayor what to do, right? If she communicates to the mayor, you can get those records. She's now, California, very, very, very California slimy. public records law is really awkward and it's difficult to read and all. It's one of the worst I've seen, but it's still you have the right to get those records. The city here has very specific sunshine ordinances, though. Oh, good, good. Well, um, I'll take so a look, look at those because yeah. I really, I really want to get this bitch. Like ever since I started doing this shit, I've had an op rose pack like on the back burner going. Like, and whenever I see anything about her, I used to troll her on Twitter all the time until she banned me from her, from seeing her Twitter. So I have to like not be logged in to look at it. Well, that you know, that's see, see, when I joined <laughs> up with Carlos Miller at Photography Is Not a Crime, I consciously brought in a project that I had been building for years, which is called the Open Records Project, and, and, and put the two together. And what we want to do is we want to build teams in every state and then have those teams build a team in every locality, teaching people how to use the Sunshine Law, letting people know about the Sunshine Law, and, 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 and strategically using it, um, including supporting people from outside of town so that you can get thousands of people making requests. And, and because, I mean, these are citizen empowering laws like no other laws exist. I mean, they give you the ability to investigate a city. They give you the ability to see what's going on. They give you the ability to take them to court if they don't comply, which you don't in any other case really usually have the ability to get into court with them. And if you bring them to court, you have discovery rights then. So you not only get public records, but you can you can get them to testify. You can do depositions. You can get you do interrogatories so you can find out what's going on underneath the surface oh. of the city using these laws and we've never used these strategically and that's what i've been trying so hard to get people to learn that you know not just go out there with signs and march which are important parts of the process but but do some of these other things together uh, with that and and we can we we really can and this is why they're so scared about me going out there um I mean, they fear these laws. Like I said, the city of Alachua burned their city hall down to stop me from getting records. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Punk Boy, Occupier Kayleen from uh, Des Moines, Iowa, asked, uh, Punk Boy, you just go down yes. the rabbit hole? Down the rabbit hole? Uh, no, I'm, I was trying to bring up some stuff on Rose Pack to show like the, the entire reason we have Ed Lee in office here is because of her meddling and uh, basically a bunch of voter fraud that was never followed up on. They had uh, what they did it was because this was 2011 when that when that uh, the mayor got elected. It was uh, her people who basically put up pop up tents in Chinatown and uh, basically urged all the people who didn't speak English to especially even the grandkids of like elderly 
Chinese who would never usually even vote in any of these things to like go and get your grandparents uh, absentee ballots and bring them down here. And what they had was they had a stencil that basically just let them vote for Ed Lee. Then they'd snatch up the absentee ballot and put it in the mail for them and send it off. So he won in a landslide of absentee ballots with nothing but his name marked. And before the ele before election day, it was all brought out. It was like reported on the news. It was in the newspaper. And so because our ex district attorney from from the city here is now the state uh, attorney general, um, she said, oh, this is terrible. This cannot be allowed to happen. So the way we're going to to this is the recourse we're going to do uh, on election day. We're going to bring in federal election monitors to the polls to make sure this this voter fraud does not stand. So how does bringing in election monitors into the polls fix absentee ballot tampering? It doesn't, oh, it, it, and he won, and he won, and, you know, basically he won in a landslide of absentee ballots that only had his name marked, which was exactly what they were doing, and there was video proof of it, uh, put up by, uh, the, the, oddly enough, Leland Yee, who was just brought down for supposed corruption, but I think he might have been part of this thing is either one or two options with Leland Yee, the state, uh, the state senator here. It was either that he had done a bunch of shady things to originally get up into politics, and then he, you know, sort of let all that go by the wayside. And because he seemed like more of an up and up guy than anybody else that was running, uh, besides uh, uh, not David Campos, who's running for state, but uh, the guy who actually won, which is uh, not Campos. Shit, I can't remember his name now. Frack. Um, but the guy who actually would have won without all the election tampering, one of the things that he was doing, he was sort of our Occupy candidate. And he would have actually done better than de Blasio in New York, who's you know, another fascist wrapped up in a progressive package. But, um, yeah, he, he wanted to divest all of the city's money out of the big banks and start a municipal credit union to, de to deal with all of the city money. And so that's why I'm sure they made sure that he didn't win. Yeah. And on, 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 on the issue of, you know, getting, getting these um, uh, monitors, um, you know, the year after I exposed that one election in, in, um, in Alachua uh, and that fraud, we, we forced the Department of State to send monitors. Uh, but, but this is how absurd it was. Um, I waited to the last minute and at four o'clock at a 430 oh. deadline, I, I signed up to be a candidate and they went ballistic. And they actually disqualified me on the TV news that night, saying I didn't file the right paperwork. Of course, on video on YouTube, we've got them saying, "Oh yeah, all your paperwork is fine and dandy," you know. But they were already on the phone trying to find a way to disqualify me. And then the news demanded a public records request for everybody's uh, uh, documents. So then they they said, "Well, we disqualified all the challenging candidates." And then the following Monday, they said, "We're going to declare that there's going to be no election and that the." All the incumbents are elected by default, you know. So, so having the state monitors really doesn't matter. They'll just steal it one way or the other. Yeah, Gascon from. Oh, she, so she's known for being a foul mouth, and so like every year because she's she pockets a bunch of money from the Chinese New Year parade here too. Um, she does this thing where like all of the people in the parade have to go through this like this one uh, thing down at the, at the piers, and they have they all they all get roasted by her, and so like. During the roast, the, the the Chinese New Year parade that like a couple of months later, like she, had, she basically like sort of admits to all of it in joke, like joke form. But like here she is when she found out that the DA had an investigation running on her. She's like, I read in the blogs that you're still investigating me. She shouted, what the hell did I do? I just elected the first Chinese mayor. You will find nothing except that I swear a lot. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Investigating you know, irregularities in the campaign, including charges of illegal campaign contributions and voter fraud. They issued a press release on Valentine's Day announcing the indictments of Go Lorries and two of its senior employees. The airport shuttle outfit was laundering campaign money by asking its employees to each donate the maximum 500 to the campaign, then paying them back from company funds. <laughs> well, seriously, I mean, I would definitely, you know, you know help, you know, you get a group of people 
uh, together that want to really expose this, and let's we can come up with a strategy to approach it through the public records law. And I would start with emails. I would start with emails to I, I, we could figure out which which officials to start with, and just and don't actually tell them what emails you're looking for. Uh, get you know whole sets of emails and to see what you can find, and then you start narrowing in your focus. Um, and, and, and you, you, they put a lot on paper, and they leave a lot of paper trails because they don't expect people to use she, these laws. She doesn't do it. She well, she tweeted uh, so much uh, one day. She said, "You know, learn from experience. Never put anything in writing." So she would go to the mayor's office each day to talk with him in person. Okay, then so then you. I'm then thinking you, that there's not going to be much on the record anymore. Well, yeah, but what you she knows well, what she's you doing. never know. Right, but what she may not put stuff in writing, but someone else might. And where I would start was I would start with the uh, the calendars for the officials. You know, who come and you find out when she's come in and who she spoke to, and then you get that person's emails to see if if they emailed somebody else about the conversation they had, or emails between the mayor and the Chinese Chamber of Commerce that she's the unofficial head of. Sure, exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, there we go. So yeah, maybe I can try to use this to try to get rid of her. She 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 also accused the city of racism when they uh, banned the practice of us. Uh, uh, I mean, you could still find it in Chinatown because no matter what you ban, Chinatown's always going to have it. But like she she accused them of racism and attacking her culture when they banned shark fin soup here in the city. Uh huh. That that's racism. Yeah, I mean, I I understand it's a traditional dish, and it you know it's supposedly got medicinal properties, but it is a you know it is a, a problem. I don't I don't think that that would constitute racism by uh, by saying you're going to and something you know. you know that that's like saying that you know we 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 should we should, you know you know. Seal veal is a is is, is a cultural uh, you know so we we should you know let people like beat baby seals in the head so that way we can get their meat you know and we you can't stop that because it's um, some you know Arctic or Nordic culture. <laughs> I want to give a, a shout out to Occupy Television uh, for restreaming us. Uh, thanks to uh, Dan Marks from Hilo. Hawaii, aloha, and thank you to Global Rev for restreaming us. Thank you, Rise PDX from Portland, Oregon, and Vlad, who, by the way, is in Ferguson. Uh, he got there I no believe, Wednesday, Thursday. Yep, he's still there. And thank you to Activist World News Now for restreaming us. Thank you, Carl. I got a voicemail from him today. Nice. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's just a shout out. Go, go ahead, yeah. Punk Boy. Learnings, a three email from no a voicemail that was just like background chatter. So I think he butt dialed us in this morning. I believe he got there uh, Wednesday night, maybe. Oh, no thieves is online right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 oh, is he? Yeah, well, and, and Prusso and some others were talking about him and asking about him. We spoke about him earlier because it was when I took him on the, you know the week before last that that conservative treehouse then decided to go after me uh, but yeah that no thief is allowed is a real he's one of those people with the with the conservative treehouse he, he go he claims his name is, is what, what did I say was uh, Kevin rise and from Marietta California is that true but he's a nutcase I have um, not been able to find a person by that name there. Let me. But we do know that he was on no, no, live so streams involving um, yeah, good sites for Marietta. It. Okay, let me see oh, he's definitely a nut. Docs. Uh, I can't remember the, the doxing website. <laughs> There used to be a really good tool that got taken down, but there's like one that's really good and I cannot remember 
for the life of me now. Oh yeah, I know the tool you're talking uh, about, right? Right. But definitely, um, that, that that conservative treehouse needs to be uh, needs to be spread around the uh, anonymous community as a a problem. Yeah. How to dox anyone? Here we go. Case to be yeah. to dox. Yeah, just quickly to answer the question, what was that guy calling? He was calling the police last week. No thief is allowed to be occupied, and then and then and then trying to have the police look to the streaming videos as evidence of crimes. I mean, it was just it, it was ridiculous. But go ahead and say what you were saying about the docking doxing thing. Uh, oh, I'm I'm just uh, I'm trying to find the, that site that I used to use that searched by username and social media stuff also. Ah. Just search for images and images. I'm just on a paste bin looking up here. Yeah, no, but this guy, he, you know, he's what you can always tell when he gets onto a onto a stream because he he trolls by by cutting and pasting the same thing over and over and over and over again to, to make it impossible to read or, or participate in the chats i mean the guy's a nut and who's this troll no thief is allowed no thieves allowed something like that Yeah, take some questions from the live chat, Charlie. And if anybody who's watching on the other restreams, uh, Charlie and Punk Boy are taking questions from the live chat at Occupy Toronto. So if you want to ask him any questions, just move on over to the live chat and uh, or just pop out the live chat uh, from Occupy Toronto and watch your restreams if you like. And have a blueberry muffin. Brookside, Brookside asked a really good question. Why didn't one Florida voter file a full recount lawsuit in Bushby Gore? And I, you know, it was really frustrating for me because I, let me tell you the story. I was living in England and I actually got I was watching this thing go down and I'm like, this is crazy when most people were asleep. And then people started calling me uh, because what? The, the whole butterfly ballot and the whole um, IBM Votomatic not registering all the votes, it was something I exposed at the University of Florida with the same machines uh, several years before that. And I used to make them do hand counts every year. And I thought the state was doing that. And I was shocked when it didn't. And in fact, I even got a phone call about a week later because Teresa Lepore, the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections, was being represented by a guy named John McGovern, who was one of the people I sued for calling me a child molester when I exposed the, the good old boy Blue Key that we talked about earlier. And um, he had just been he, he, he had just been admitted to the bar despite having several years not being admitted for his act of moral turpitude in the case I brought against him, and he's there representing her. And the week before I went to trial with them, he was elected by eight votes through the tampering with absentee ballots and then not allowing them all to be counted. So I'm like, this is, this is just craziness. Uh, but I wanted to file just such a case. But everybody thinks that you got to rely on the parties to do it. And, of course, the Democratic Party took the totally wrong strategy by saying – but, I mean, I understand why they did it because courts tend to think, well, we don't want to see grand – uh, proposal. We don't want to do whole recounts. Just give us a focused one. So they focused on a couple counties that they thought if recounted, they'd win. And I said, no, you have to have a case that says bring all the votes and have them recounted. But since I was in London, I, I really couldn't do it. it it's a case that I wanted to work with with the law professor um, that I did all that other stuff with. But it was I, I was very frustrated with that whole thing. And I, I don't understand why no other citizen did it. But but that's the problem is is uh, people don't know they have the power to take these ca cases, and the other problem is it's very hard to find a lawyer who's willing to do it with you, um, and and really you you, you need uh, unless you are really versed in the law you're going to need a, a really good lawyer to do those cases. Yeah, the Chad problem I exposed that several. I mean I exposed that in the eighties that that. Now let's. 
didn't th those IBM Votomatic machines, particularly since they were purchased in the '60s, and and things got and then the pegs got worn down. The the Chad problem wasn't called. Nobody called it Chad until then. But you know these these things. You know, twenty percent of the votes were always being found in this black box that I discovered. Yeah, uh, underneath the machine, they would automatically go there, and they were never counted. So I made them count them by hand every year. Oh, they were pissed when I started doing that. I, I thought the uh, the state was always doing that. Brookside makes it very quick. They don't like me because I speak their legal language. You are absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And that's why we have to teach people to do the same thing. You know, you play in their arena and you know the rules better than they do and you can really mess with them. And if, the, if at the same time you're working outside the arena, then you've really got a one-two punch that can really take on the system. So, we're going to say something? No, I'm eating. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, we need it. We need an app that shares food and drinks. <laughs> Shanger lattes, anyone? <laughs> I could use a beer. That's Anybody the got a good I beer? Just found it. Oh, you PIPL found it? dot com. Yeah, P I P L people or people. Here, let me. Uh, I'll bring it up. Uh, there we go. There, P I P L. So this is a good site for doxing people. So, what is your name? Um, you said his name was what? Kevin Rise. Kev Rose? Kevin. Kevin Rise. He claims his name is Kevin Rise. Location valid. I got to fix that. Well, you do that. All. I'm going to add. Son Dave asked the question over in Global Revolution, and I think it's important to address because he. I, I don't. I see someone was talking about business law. I don't know what he was saying this to, but he asks, "How is something different from common law or admiralty law?" And I know right away where this is coming from. And, and let me just try to. Uh, first of all, the idea that. If you see a flag with gold tassel on it in the courtroom, that's a signal that you're under admiralty law. That's completely nonsense. It's not true at all. A flag is just a flag. And, and almost no judge even studied or knows admiralty law. And admiralty law really does only really pertain to, to uh, commercial transactions primarily that involve um, uh, 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 transportation by, by water. Um, and yeah, sometimes it doesn't appear so, but if it even goes on a river, it can come under admiralty law. Now, common law, common law uh, is confusing because it means more than one thing. There are different meanings of common law, the same word. Basically, um, ancient common law is the system of law that that developed in England uh, in 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 the in the in the 12th century, uh, and particularly uh, later in the 13th century, it really became it matured um, under it, this is you know this was the Norman law that was imposed by by the by, by the by the, uh, the the kings from after after <coughs> William the Conqueror, particular. Particularly, his son uh, Henry II, um, who who was probably the most uh, influential in creating um, uh, English common law, and and that just really refers to that system of law which developed uniquely in England, distinct from the law that was being developed at the same time on the continent, which was is is now known as civil law. And the con you got to understand that this is after the Roman Empire fell, when almost the entire continent in England was under Roman law, and so these new systems of law were coming up out of customary law. And on the continent, you had another thing happening, and that was the rediscovery of Roman law, uh, in particularly the the Justinian Code and Digest. And so they created a completely different system of law in the law schools um, on the continent. And so the common law refers to the system that develops out of the, you know, the 12th century on in England uh, as opposed to the civil law. And, of course, that civil law 
uh, particularly with the French Revolution and then Napoleon and the French Empire, became uh, imposed uh, in a modern form uh, throughout the continent, in Germany, in, you know, in France, in Spain. Um, and so there's another aspect of the word common law that, that gets more into this, and that is the um, common law has a different mode of action and a different conception of evidence and a different uh, role for judges. Um, the, you know, the, the English common law was originally the king's law, but the kings, uh, starting with Henry II, started delegating that law function to judges. And so eventually common law became known as judge-made law. And it's, it's the concept of case law. Uh, and, and, so, and it's also the concept of an adversarial process. Uh, so you have the, the idea that, that you have cases that build precedent, and that's where law develops over time from. And when you go to court, you have two lawyers competing in a courtroom over evidence, as well as arguing different things of law, with very little role for the judge. Um, whereas in the civil law system, this was designed, uh, you know, particularly uh, in, in the period of the French Revolution, uh, it was designed to be a very rational system of law, sort of a scientific notion of law. And so rules became the most important thing. And the judge plays a dominant role there. Um, and so the one way I would describe it is, is that in the common law system, you have you know you have facts and you have law, and what you do is you try to, uh, to you, you try to shape the law around the facts. Whereas in the civil law system, you try to shape the facts around the law. Um, Magna Carta, Winston raises on there. You know, Magna Carta is a document in the common law history. Uh, it's very very much misunderstood because actually. Um, you know, later uh, in the 19th century and in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the late 18th century, around the time of the American Revolution, but even more in the 19th century, Magna Carta became very much known for its role in shaping uh, liberal, and I don't mean liberal as in liberal versus conservative, I mean liberal as in John Locke, philosophy, that kind of stuff, liberty-focused, limited government. Um, so, Magna Carta is considered the founding document of, of notions like due process, um, but, but, but in truth, Magna Carta didn't really last very long in effect at the time under King uh, John, uh, uh, who was, it was imposed upon, um, and, then the, and then the kings that followed him, um, they didn't like it very much either and often ignored it. But um, it, it was not a document about the liberties of the English people. It was a document about the barons' rights over the king. So it did have this notion of limited government because it was the baron saying the king is very limited in power. It becomes developed over time in history to represent the these, these concepts of liberty government and the rights to due process and things like that. Uh, that's, that's where Magna Carta fits in there. And habeas corpus, yes, uh, the, the concept of habeas corpus actually comes from before that, but it, it's very much developed into uh, Magna Carta. So, yeah. Show me the body. Show me the body is habeas corpus, yeah. But, but look, you know, I, I, I was denied... Three times I was held in jail, you know, during that whole thing with Latcha, Flor Florida, and all that. At one point in time, for nine months, and uh, I could not get a court to accept my petition for habeas. I don't mean to to accept the have me released. I mean they wouldn't even accept receipt of the petition for habeas corpus. Every court said it's not our jurisdiction. So effectively, there was no habeas corpus. I mean, I was denied my right to habeas corpus three times. Um, then. Which is basically like a wellness check sort of nowadays. Make sure you're not being abused by any of the jurisdictions. Well, you, well the whole purpose of habeas corpus and show me the body is, is that you, you, if you are held uh, by a magistrate or by a court or, you know, or, well, or by a, a jailer, um, you are supposed to have the right to have a judge have you before them to determine whether your detention is lawful or not. And that's that's what the whole concept of habeas and corpus. And make sure that you haven't been abused while in custody, and to make sure you're not abused in custody. It's your right well, to arraignment, and to not be to not be tortured. 
while you're well, that, 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 bec- that becomes a subsidiary, but by bringing you into court, you actually then can, can raise issues of maltreatment. But really, its primary yeah, purpose but, is just to have you, whether you're being lawfully held or not. But, but I mean, that's what the whole bring me, the, show me the body means. It's like to, sh- to show whether there are signs of abuse while they were in custody. Is what I, I, I no, 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 no. It really, it just meant put, put the body in front of me so that way I can see that there's a person and that they're alive, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it becomes used later. Um, f- for that very purpose as well, because you know, all of a sudden you bring somebody into court and they're you know, and, and they're all black and blue. Um, now you've got a, a judge seeing it. Um, Thank goodness, hoping- torture is a thing of the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, you know, there's a lot of judges that will sit there and I mean, I mean, look, if you listen to the video, you know, of me in the courtroom when I'm being beaten and tortured and you hear me screaming for my life and saying I can't breathe, what does the judge do? He goes, oh, the, the, they say, oh, can, can, can we close the door because there's too much noise? And that was a good judge, relative. Uh, Banksy, we don't know. The only thing that they've stopped so far is my traveling, but uh, I have a feeling that they're going to try and do more. I, 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 we don't know, but uh, uh, he asked about whether they're trying to mess with my probation. Um, uh, wait, wait. You know, we one just, of the we things just went was, down briefly. Hold on. Oh, okay. uh, there's some internet connectivity problems on my end. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Go ahead. Oh, Banksy, I was asked oh, ask, to answer your, hold on, your question. Hold on. Uh, no? we need some, okay, we're back. Go ahead. Take two. Yeah, Banksy, I was asked the question if they're trying to mess with my probation or they just keep me from going, uh, traveling. Uh, so far, they've only kept me from traveling, uh, but we don't really know what they'll try and pull. Um, one of the real concerns I have is that, you see, um, the, the, the end of my probation, really, nobody knows when it's going to end. And there are some people claiming it's actually the computer says 2020, which is absurd. Um, but so we were going to go in January and wait till five years of probation had expired um, and, and demand that it be terminated. Uh, and the probation officer was very, very, my latest probation officer was very, very, um, you know, supportive of that. Uh, but now they'll try and use this to, to stop that. I know that. Yeah, I just wrote on the live chat. Every time we have Punk Boy on, it's always a technical blast. <laughs> And, oh, every, yeah. and, every, and every time we have so, Charlie yeah. on, we go on for at least seven hours plus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Banksy, 2020 is... is, is, is I, 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 people are on murder charges with less probation than that. Uh, it was my first offense, and it was two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer. It's absurd. So I, didn't, I couldn't find a Kevin Rise in California, but I did find one in St. Louis. Oh, really? really? You see it on the screen there? Uh, I see. Yeah, I can see it. I can't read what it says under the name. Oh, there we go. It's a little Thirty-five over years old. Is 56. there any way to decrease the exposure? You're using many cams, right? Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Let me see. I got some it's, sliders it's, it's over It's an here. exposure problem. It, well, I've got contrast and brightness. So, would turn the contrast down like that? Does that help? Yeah. Uh, the brightness. Uh, yeah. More the brightness. Okay, okay, go so ahead. Brightness down, brightness down, contrast up. Does that help? Uh, yep, yep. Uh, and there's a bit see. of a, a uh, few second delay on the uh, occupied so Toronto so uh, screen. Uh, a little less brightness. It's more the brightness, I think. Well, the brightness is almost all the way down. Okay, then fiddle with the contrast. Okay. Let's see. There's it's, a jump down, but now it's too dark. Yeah, just the hair. Just right. up the brightness yeah. a bit, just the hair. A little less. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now let's see. Now can you read that? No. no. Uh, <laughs> the brightness just a bit and the contrast down. Contrast down. Oh, too far. Good job. And then up brightness a tiny bit. Oh, too many. Right about there. No. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, a little, it it's like a fuzzy. 
Maybe grayscale would help. Grayscale it. Stay there. And there, how about that? Black and white, does that work better? Uh, read it. Uh, Kevin J. Rise, 56 years old, from St. Louis and Hillsboro, Missouri. Must be another one of those little outlying towns there. Uh, but that's it. I mean, let's see, all the media. Kevin Rise, St. Paul, Minnesota. Kevin Rise, United States. Uh, that's just from somebody's Twitter, but he's buzz code. Vital records, archives, birth records. Yeah, I don't really see much of anything. Here's some Facebook accounts. Kevin Rize, also known as Andres Goyanes. Kevin at Rise, AAA Kevin. Kevin Rising, Kevin Stone. No. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any of them here in California. Yeah, let's try. What was what was the screen name somewhere? Uh, no thieves allowed. See if any of those come up from the other site. Searching the web. No thieves allowed. Oh, they have a photo bucket. They have a Twitter being mentioned by Mary Kay Melton, which is Mary Kay 48 on the Twitter. Uh, another Twitter status update. No thieves space allowed. But then also no thieves allowed all, all one word. That's it. There's a bunch of mentions. Shelly Manning. Uh, uh, my mostly two, just mentioned in a bunch of tweets. Yeah, my, yeah, that's the only place I've been able And it's mostly him tweeting. It's mostly is tweeting from his li uh, live stream uh, post. But uh, my, two, uh, my two cents said, go to Santilli's streams from Murrieta uh, back several years ago I think that was and he said she uh, I think my my two I think you're a woman right <laughs> I, I yeah, that's Barb. That's, that's yeah, Barb yeah. down in San Diego She's oh, awesome. oh okay I, I didn't realize that okay um yeah yeah I, I, I she says that she thinks that Kevin may have given his name on that stream back then okay. oh it was just a month that was a couple months ago okay Barb is a great resource she sends me a lot of stories and I met her when I went down to, uh, oh yeah, here's tweets from InterOccupy earlier. Uh, with, between Bella and Courtney and InterOccupy. What stream link and stream channel and no thieves allowed? Uh, I wish I still had a freaking uh, contact over a new stream. Maybe I could get his user info from them, but they'd be breaking his privacy. But. Right. Uh, no. Well, although although somebody should report him to UStream for violating the t the terms of service when he goes on in the and he and he floods chats with 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 uh, spammed uh, cut and paste. Oh, I can do that easily. There's a uh, let's see. There's the news email address. There's events like so. If you if you want to try to get your thing featured when you're going on on UStream. You can send an email to events at ustream.tv and uh, give them a heads up, and a lot of times they'll they'll you know put you as a featured thing or something. Sometimes, uh huh. Not so much since Terry's not there anymore. All the people that they have working as liaisons with us, they they just have this turnover that that goes, and like they just haven't been updating me on. I guess because I haven't been streaming so much lately. Uh, I I I've asked them to give me one of the free accounts, but they haven't gotten back to me yet. See, they, I used to have somebody that I could just call them up and say, hey, I need you to do this and this and this to them. Because yeah. um, uh, a good handful of our accounts are all protected now and, and will never be deleted as long as they exist. Because right. um, the CEO is like, you know, they used like, like their little, I mean, it was like an unknown program where they were just like sort of supporting us on the back end. Um, but now the CEO has made their whole like Ustream for Change campaign and uh, turned it into like their nonprofit uh, arm of the company. Yeah. Yes, because, uh, yeah, for those that are uh, tuning in late, for the last two weeks, I've been helping train Charlie. Uh, we interviewed him on my show two weeks ago. And just tonight, we went through all your channel settings, and uh, you were all set to go to Ferguson on Thursday before you were nabbed, forced to Did you have to fix it? 
did you help him fix? Because it was still saying like Battle for Berkey. For, yeah, for yeah, Canadian yeah, yeah. Because that's that was like one of the channels I set up in there for that March back in the summer. I remember. But, I remember. Yeah, well, yeah. Now it's now we got my main channel. Yeah, that's the primary channel, default the default channel. Yeah. Not only is Charlie good to go, we went through all your channel settings just before this show uh, at Charlie Grapsky uh, at UStream, but uh, your iPhone is totally uh, set to go. So any problems in the future, uh, you should be up and running within 10 to 15 seconds if need be. Uh, by the way, Punk Boy, uh, Charlie has an iPhone. Uh, any uh, things uh, he should know about the iPhone app? Because I know the Android app, the yeah, user uh, app for uh, Ustream. So impart, impart some knowledge about live streaming from an iPhone. Uh, to Charlie and everybody else. I've never, I've never, I've never had an iPhone. <laughs> oh, so you you got an Android like me? No, but yeah, but uh, so one of the things that they do do on uh, on, if, if, I mean, they had to have changed it because they changed the Android app really drastically a few months back, or six months or more back. Um, it used to be that like on the screen of the phone. Oh, let me turn my video on. Uh, color. Me, where am I? Here I am. There we go. So Lost like, in the digital on, on world. the screen here, on the screen here, like when you used to stream, I'll even bring it up to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I gotta put a battery in. Um, so yeah, it used to be that on the screen, you had this much screen, screen real estate, and then the bottom like inch and a half or something was where the chat was. And so you had that overlaid on top of the video that you were broadcasting. So you could actually follow the chat while you were streaming. Apparently, they found that to be, uh, oh, you're, you're messing up part of the screen or some, whatever reasoning they had. And they turned it to where now you actually have to click the button on the, on the, on the side that says chat, which will change you to, to the chat screen. So you have to go away from what you're streaming and remember like in the back of your head, oh, I, I got to keep checking the chat to see if people are saying something. And you have to keep going and flipping between these two separate screens now. When I mean, it used to just be a small part of your screen was was the chat overlaid on top of the video. Oh, the iPhone trans, still has the, the iPhone app still has that that oh, little way. I don't know why they did it to ours, but I, I've been I've been trying to find like backups of the old app so that I could put it back to the way it was. Yeah, actually, uh, Punk Boy, the way it works is yeah, if you click the live chat on the Android app. Uh, Ustream's producer app, uh, it dims the image about two thirds and it overlays the, the whole thing, overlays it with the live chat. So it's really hard to, you could see you have, what you you're have framing hardware, in the background. Well, you could see it, yeah, but it's. That's only really if you have newer different. hardware. It depends on your video chip and the driver that's, that, that your phone is using because uh, older hardware like mine is like two generations back, it won't overlay on top of it. Yeah, I got it's the Galaxy. Uh, I got the oh, Galaxy yeah, S4. That's the equivalent of an iPhone. <laughs> yes, I know. But yeah, it's there's the, not a lot. Of, company. There's a, not a lot of app uh, options uh, uh, in terms of settings. Like for example, I don't get this part. I'm live streaming and I can't figure out how to change this. There is just no way to do it. I'm live streaming at 16:9 aspect ratio. That's the screen size. Uh, and when I look on screen, it's crunched to a 4-3 aspect ratio, and I can't change that anywhere. Yeah, that's because they don't do HD for mobile. Yeah, but I've seen stuff come out of Ferguson on Ustream, uh, and it's 16-9, and it's pretty razor sharp, like what Reb's yeah. doing and, and, and a few other. The, 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 the app on the, on the iPhone allows you to put HD. There's a button. Yeah, I think the, I, I'm leaning towards getting an iPhone as well, because I'm not impressed with the quality of the uh, Ustream's uh, Android app. Even though I got I got a Galaxy S4, um, I'm not impressed. Uh, certainly, the live stream, the new livestream.com has a better app, but 
as you saw tonight, Charlie, uh, the, certainly the channel settings on Ustream beats the new.livestream.com channel settings. It's, it's, it's very so complicated to just go live at the drop of a dime with the live stream app. You've got to schedule a show and all this other nonsense just to get your fucking uh, stream up when something like happens on the spur of the moment. I know, I, and there's and and the. There's end arounds for that as well, uh, which sucks. I don't like the fact that, like here, at least with Occupy Toronto, you come to a live stream channel, right? And if we're live, boom, everything's there. If we're not, we could. Boom, well, losing your sound mine. there. Uh, mine? No, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're, you're, well, you're fading out, but it's gone, buddy. Oh, really? And uh, yeah. so that uh, the. Uh, so in terms of channel settings at new.livestream.com, the fact that you're going to an, a sort of like an events page, or if you go to the main page, it's a numbered thing. Uh, unless you upgrade to a paid account, then you can get, uh, what do they call it, a, a, a dainty URL with your name. But you have to upgrade to paid one. And then both Ustream and new.livestream.com's free accounts after 30 days your video your is, purges, lo yeah. is lost and most live streamers don't practice archival practices and and that really uh sucks um you know because a lot of stuff is lost to, in the digital dust which is sad um so i mean even though i, I really love that you stream you actually go to one page so that quote unquote everyone's on the same page and I love the channel settings. Um, I love new.livestream.com, but its channel settings suck. Uh, but the app, certainly the app at new.livestream.com is far superior than the Ustream's uh, producer app. Absolutely. Yeah, I've never really used Livestream very much. Like I think I've done a couple of test videos off of my phone from it, and that's about it. Ustream had a signal strength meter. Oh no, Catherine says, Kaylin says she wishes they had a signal strength meter. Um, they don't, but what they do have is uh, at the top of the screen, it will say uh, network issues or bandwidth issues or something like when, when your stream gets degraded, uh, they notify you at the top that it's bad, but there's not a, not a constant meter that tells you what, what the state of your connection is. Yeah, new.livestream.com. Uh app is better for the stream oh God, uh, signal strength <laughs> yeah and the and what you're talking about there uh, yeah it's a very top right hat corner of the Ustream producer app and you get that sort of yellow text with the yellow triangle yield sign and and that means you're down and uh which yeah that not having diagnostics uh well, but the thing is, at least Ustream is offering free accounts to certain people that apply, right? Uh, it seems they're behind on their application process, though, from what Charlie was saying. Oh, man, are they. I know, I applied in August, and I haven't heard back. Um, uh, the, a good person to get a hold of is uh, uh, Arthur Klein, the guru within, who was on, I think he was on, the when you came on my show, like he was one of the other people. Because yep. he's, he's got... He's got contact with the CEO guy, so I would you, like uh, ask him to, to, to call on your behalf or something. And uh, can you put some contact info on the uh, IR Thanks. at uh, Skype? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. He's, oh, where is it here? That's the other doorbell. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, he's at the guru within on Twitter. And I have his number somewhere, but I don't know. And uh, give me a moment. I have got a guest who just showed up. Hold on a sec. Let's see where my mute button is here. Uh, yeah, Charlie, you want to put the link up on the uh, Occupy Toronto live chat of uh, your... You, it's Ustream. Fred, yeah, Fred just put it up there a few minutes ago. Ah, thank you, Fred, our co-head mod at Occupy Toronto. And yeah, for those watching on other restreams, it's ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash C Grabsky. And uh, yes, and for those of you watching in the archives, yar. Uh, 
just came online uh, tonight. We went through all the channel settings and uh, I mean you have other ones but your phone is now synced up to that so if any shit comes down like what happened last Wednesday you could be live. Boom. Yeah, and uh, I, I tell you what, be prepared because this is going to be a real interesting couple months because uh, uh, I think the shit's going to hit the fan when, when, when they come back with no indictment. I think it's going to spread very quickly across the country. Well, when can we expect uh, the Mike Brown? Um, is it a grand jury or what, what, what is it's, that? It's a grand jury, yeah. Uh, it'll be before, it'll be by January. Uh, I can't remember what day in January they have to, uh, but uh, it's it's, it's going to be closer to that, I believe, because they're just going to, they, they, they're hoping that somehow it's going to mysteriously fade away. Um, but of course, it's only going to grow the, sh the movement and the, and the concerns and the anger and the frustration and the, it's just going to grow every day until then. And, and, they were taking, and yeah, uh, well, they were taking bets on the conservative treehouse when, when it would happen, and they were thinking like definitely after the election, maybe November sixth. I don't think it's going to happen that soon. No, I don't think so. I, I think it'll be sometime uh, mid to late December, right around the holiday season. That's uh, either right around the end of Thanksgiving into probably between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Because that's when most people are not paying attention to things, and they're going to think that that's going to be the the hope, uh, you know, that people won't won't notice. <laughs> that's why Obama but, signed the NDA on November on uh, January first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the but this is not going to go away. This is going to be uh, it's 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 not going to be pretty. Of course, my saying this is, is part of what they were trying to say. See, I'm, I'm, I'm plotting to make it not pretty. <laughs> uh, you got someone dancing on your screen there. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what the hell that means. <laughs> <laughs> Patriot Acts. Okay. Oh, so let me put this up. Uh, and now you got oh, this was. This was uh, I missed we that show. About, I show you wrong. Yeah. Oh. Are you are you not seeing that uh, Chinese writing? There we go. It's like this. It's like drone footage of the height. Of oh, I think we're blank. I think we're. Uh, have we lost the signal? Uh, I'm seeing. I'm seeing it on my Skype. Yeah, yeah, but uh, okay. There's, yeah, okay. Is it Hong Kong? Yeah, but just the, sh the shots from this drone are just like amazing. Oh wow! Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, D. Someone was asking you to do a welcome back recap. <laughs> Patriot Thanks, two. Touched. Patriot two. Oh, uh, Kaylin said that uh, it went black for a few seconds at some point. Yeah, it did. It, it, when you first put your, your thing on, uh, the, the, the thing went down real quick. But I think Patriot 2 meant, meant a, a recap of the past couple hours. <laughs> yeah, we're, we've been talking with uh, Charlie Grapsky, and, uh, who's in Florida, and uh, Punk Boy in uh, San Francisco. And uh, we got Charlie on because Charlie was forcefully arrested by a SWAT team in Florida on Wednesday. He was on his way to go to Ferguson. Uh, Charlie has been uh, helping out the people of Ferguson for a good month, six weeks now, to get police records from the Mike Brown uh, assassination by the Ferguson police. Uh, and uh, he needs, uh, he's got travel restrictions. You'd think we're living in a fucking uh, China or old style Soviet Union where you need travel papers. So uh, in an effort to stop Charlie from going to Ferguson, uh, he was forcibly detained on Wednesday uh, and uh, he was released on Saturday and uh, we're interviewing him 
tonight. And uh, Punk Boy, uh, we were supposed to get Punk Boy on last week, but something happened. And uh, Punk Boy and Charlie are good friends. And uh, so, uh, and it's always a blast having Punk Boy on in San Fran. And uh, so we've been talking about that and uh, how to get police public records out. And uh, I'm still, as the last seven months, I'm live streaming from Gopit Lodge uh, in Elsa Bookdog First Nations in New Brunswick on the east coast of Canada. It's a Mi'kmaq territory and uh, Gopit means beaver in Mi'kmaq. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the the thing that's another thing too. All of a sudden, it's gotten very quiet in the media as to what's going on in Hong Kong. Uh, but that I, you know, like I, you know, I I think I was telling you guys, uh, you know, the, when I was on last time, what's that? Noise? There's some noise coming in my my uh, my somewhere. But um, it's from you know, I was very in, Oh, okay. I was very involved with Tiananmen Square, and I helped. Uh, the leaders from Tiananmen Square who escaped, get out of China and come to America when the United States wouldn't let him in. And I, uh, I helped to get legislation out of the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee when it was stalled because they were trying to put uh, abortion language into it to protect the students and scholars who were here protesting from having to go back uh, and, and face, you know, jail or worse. Of course, it was the first thing I'd ever really done. I mean, I, I'd always been trying to wait for someone to teach me how to be involved, and and that was, went on, and uh, I saw where it was headed, and I just said, well, let's do something, and I just did it, and that's how I became an uh, active citizen. Uh, yeah, it's been 25 years. That's It's crazy, but, um, you know, th this is shaping up just like Tiananmen Square, and uh, and the government is getting very frustrated, and I'm very worried at what's going to happen there. Typing. That was me. Uh, and I see the Simpsons. <laughs> oh, this is how the oil industry keeps their monopoly. Ah. Three participants, two hours, 23 minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. Cool picture there. Patriot Ebola too. I was not. I was not just detained. I was put in a mental institution. We call it fifty-one fifty here. That was forcibly, and they used the Baker Act to do so. Uh, the nasty uh, act in Florida. Uh, talk about the the Baker Act and what they used to forcefully confine you against your will. It's named after Jim and Tammy Faye, right? <laughs> yes, if you have really bad makeup, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I refused. I refused any medications. I refused any. I, I didn't even eat or drink while I was in there, which is something I I do when I'm held uh, against my will as a sign of my freedom. Um, you know, people think it's harming me, but I, I've done it before for a pretty long time. It was a good way to lose weight. I, 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 I'll tell you this. I actually did lose weight in that five days or whatever it was because I bought pants to wear to Ferguson because I had no long pants. And I went through several sizes before I could find ones that fit. And I got ones that barely fit. And then I put them on yesterday and I went to watch the Auburn football game, which didn't turn out like I wanted, and drink a couple beers. And my pants were falling down. <laughs> so I lost some weight. <laughs> So, so do they not have anything like that in in Canada, D? I, I'm not sure, uh, you know, D? but uh, you know they're not as blatant. Uh, we're getting worse and worse. You know, Canada's role as yep. peacekeepers to the world—that's uh, out the window with Harpo. Uh, uh, it's certainly not as bad as, you know, the. The, the police in the states, uh, you know, using the Constitution as toilet paper, taking but away everyone's rights. What I saw in Ferguson last night, you know, how they're attacking civilian journalists. Uh, it, it's just a, a mockery, you know. Um, but in terms of that in Canada, uh, 
I don't think it's as bad. Yeah, they, I mean, it's pretty ubiquitous here. Like, no matter what state you're in, I'm sure. Like, I don't know why they have to call it Baker Act in Florida, but any jurisdiction that I know of, like, is always allowed to keep some people on a 72-hour psychiatric hold. Like, anytime you're a threat to yourself or anyone else, like, they can 50, here they call it 5150. It's the police code. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's I don't know who actually protecting why he got it named after him there. Yeah, I mean, I it's, it's always a, a public know. safety thing. But like yeah. everything else, you know. I but mean, of course, they, you know, the, the, the police use anything they can to, 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 that they can use in their arsenal against you. They'll use it. See my award from the press club. Of yeah, no, 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 no. They didn't. They didn't give me any good drugs in there. In fact, you know, the irony of all this is in the police report they made this emphasis that I'm not on my meds. Uh, of course, I actually didn't say anything like that. I mean, he, he asked me if I was taking any med. No. Um, now I'm 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 prescribed medications for when I take Kevin PTSD. Uh, I, oh, we're down. We're down. Yeah, we're down for a second. Black screen. Black screen. Uh, I've only got a camera feed up now. Nope. Now we're back. Right. Okay, yeah, I mean, and we're, we're, we're back. Testing from oh, Skype, well, so there's nothing that I can do that will affect yeah, you. I don't, yeah, it's weird. Uh, yeah, okay, we're we're back now. So let's continue where you left off there, Charlie. Well, I was saying is the irony is they, they, they go out of their way to, to try and make it look like I'm like, you know, out of control and I'm off my meds. Now, the medications I'm on when they put me in that place, they would never have given me because what medications am I prescribed? I'm prescribed Xanax. And, and they won't give you Xanax in the jails or in these mental institutions because um, <laughs> they, they're deemed recreational. Uh, not I, I can't understand how it's recreational because it barely does anything to me, although it does more than any other medication. It does take some of the edge off the uh, anxiety. Um, but you know, I get pretty bad PTSD and, um, and then I'm also prescribed Prozac and, and that really, I mean, you don't take Prozac. It's not going to, it's not like I'm walking around the street, you know, you know, hearing voices and, uh, and, 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 and looking to kill people, uh, which is the way they made it out. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Just like the guy said, I was sweating profusely and I was shaking with the air-conditioned car. Oh, we're, bl we're blacked out again. Oh, we're back up. Okay, we're back. Yeah. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, we're uh, we're frozen again. Uh, okay, we're back. Um, the uh, it's sometimes uh, just one of those things. Uh, as I say a lot on this show, since it is a masterclass on how to live stream, that there there is no shame in going down. What is a shame is you don't know that you're down, and it's very very important as to why we're going down now. Uh, yes, uh, we've talked a lot about the NSA algorithm, the front end and the back end. Uh, last week's show, I talked about the new nasty back end uh, NSA algorithm. Uh, sometimes it depends on what we're talking about that triggers some craziness because I got really nice bandwidth on my end and I'm just trying to figure out why. Um, but anyways, you, were you left off at sweating profusely. Charlie, you want to continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the cop went time. out of his way to write these fictions. You know, they, 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 I mean, the, the guy just lies about everything, but has to embellish it to the point of absurdity. Um, you know, saying I was sweating profusely and shaking, you know, uh, you know, as if I was like, you know, on the verge of, you know, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, uh, mentally distraught and, you know, uh, a killer on the loose, you know, uh, I was going to kill myself or kill somebody else. If they didn't lock me up, uh, it's just un unbelievable. And I'm just sitting there, you know, nonchalantly. I mean, I was angry inside, 
about what had just happened, but I'm talking on the phone to my lawyer in a casual tone of voice sitting next to my father with the air conditioner on in the car when all of a sudden this knock comes on the glass and I look up and it's a cop and then I see it says SWAT on his uniform and I'm like, they call a SWAT team? You know, it's, it's what, so I open the window and I'm like, yes, can I help you? And he's like, did you just make threats uh, to the officials in that office? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, didn't, didn't do any such thing. And then he walked away for a while. And then he came back and he asked me another question. And he walked away for a while. <laughs> what a waste of resources, eh? Unbelievable, eh? Yeah. Uh, it's just... I'm like, what the hell is a SWAT team? Now, th like I said earlier, thankfully it wasn't Albuquerque where the SWAT team comes out in military garb, you know, camouflage. You know, when when they came into the to, to, to when the when the protesters were in city in the city hall in the mayor's office, they came in camouflage. I said, what do you do? Hide behind a potted plant? You know, <laughs> you know camouflage body armor and 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 high powered assault rifles. Uh, you know. For for thirty for thirty protesters, including you know one who was you know seventy years old, you know, uh, who chained herself to a a, a, a stand, a, you know, a, a pot a, a stand that had a pot that pottery on top of it. Maybe this is a good time to start talking about. So, when did the Pentagon authorize the militarization of the police? How long ago was that? And which means they're going to get a shitload of new gear, new this, new that. Well, this it has been slowly a, started. Yeah, gradual yeah, it process. Slowly started back during Bush, but it was Obama who put it into high gear. Uh, since two thousand eight, obviously. <laughs> but, um, well, it, it really start. Years, it really starts with the emergence of the concept of a SWAT team after the Watts riots, and uh, and the spread of that concept, and then with the war on drugs and the inf and the and the and the cooperation of police with federal law enforcement to go after drug trafficking and of course they're really going after usually small time people who are just users and um and then and then yeah during the particularly during the bush well you know you had you had nixon and the and the tough on crime stuff that started a lot of this um and then you know with the bush era and in clinton era um it, it just it just it just it just grew and grew and grew um, and nobody, n nobody outside of the police really were recognizing this. Um, so it's that's 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 the problem. It's it's like being the frog in the, you know, I almost said the frog in the blender, but I mean the frog in the right. boiling water. <laughs> if you want to know, I'll... Uh, to an ebook, to yeah, I'll put a link in the chat room to uh, to download a pirated copy of. Uh, so let me put a link. Here we go. So this will get you to a site that will download an ebook for uh, Rise of the Warrior, of Warrior Cop, which is basically, uh, yeah. So that link there should uh, should take you to a site that will let yeah, you download. Yeah, in fact, one of the things I was going to do uh, in Albuquerque, story about he's going to be there on the sixth. Oh, we're down. We're down. We're down again. Black, 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 everyone says. Program is called 1033. Yeah. yeah. I'm sweeping tanks from schools now. Live again, says Cameron. Certainly the smells of the NSA back in one, what we're talking about, we, you know, I was trying to show that link on the uh, I'll chat I'll and we went down uh so uh yeah and it's extremely laggy tonight uh so i, I yeah it's smelling more and more of the nsa back end one uh yeah go ahead punk boy you were talking about that book you want to repeat that oh i'm typing it into the chat room so people know what it is if they can't hear us yeah it's Rad radley balco's rise of the warrior cop it's, a, it's really a very, you know, I mean, Balco is a, he's a libertarian. He's got a very particular point of view, but you got to, I mean, and some people don't like that, but, you know, people got to learn that, that there, there are overlapping perspectives despite ideologies or partisanship and all that. And, 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 
you know, as long as people wear their bias on their sleeve or their from then you can interpret it into your point of view just by just yeah. and that's just a, by knowing that. So I have no problem very, with very, other ideologies because I know that they're just going to take my point of view and morph it over into theirs, and then you can understand them. Yeah, it's a very well written book. It's a very well written book, and it's very informative on the history of of of, of this militarization of police. Um, and it's easy to read. Uh, so it's it's not written for an academic audience. It's written for a, a, a you know the general public. Yeah, we call them layman's. Yeah. Millions, because they think of us like they're the military. Now, I, I guess I've been I've been wanting to bring this up, and I think this is a good time to bring this up. People forget, okay, that the the Bush Jr. administration did a lot of nasty things, but you know, the, in my book, the absolute worst thing that they did was not nine eleven. But certainly Dick Cheney, you know, uh, over that eight-year period, uh, granting more and more and more powers to the president. Look at a PBS show called, just Google if you're watching this, PBS Cheney's Law. Or I, thought was, I thought it was Cheney's War. Wasn't it Cheney's War? No, it's Cheney's Law. There's also Cheney's uh, War. But the thing about Cheney's Law, it goes through how he systematically went through to not only give authorize the president to give more and more powers, but it's at a level when they finished that the president has so much power that he does not have to listen to the Congress. There's a few times where he, he spat in the Congress's face and got away with it, not only to go against whatever the Congress wants, but whatever the courts said, right? So absolute power given to the president's office, and that's what Obama inherited. So much okay. of what we're going through and why the police say last night could like arrest and detain and pepper spray journalists, you know, and like throw the constitution out the window because with the militarization of the police, you know, um, who's, who's the commander in chief of the military? The, the president. So well, we're at a state that he, they could do whatever the fuck they want in the states because their commander in chief doesn't listen to anybody. He's got well, that power entrenched. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Now I wanted comments on that. No, 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 that's a misunderstanding because the, the militarization of the police has not made the police actual military and therefore they're not under the president's authority as commander in chief, which actually is only supposed to be turned on when Congress declares war. It's not supposed to be a day to day function. But the, no, 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 the militarization of the police is is the, the rise of these state and local police forces in in, in their methods and tactics and weapons. Um, but there's also an overlap uh, between police and military in terms of training and cooperation. But the, the Posse Comitatus Act prevents the 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 the, the, the uh, military itself from actually engaging in domestic police activities. But so they created the DHS. That's all that did. Is well, yeah, no, that, yeah, that's there. that's that's just yeah, that's just that, that's crazy stuff. But um, but while the while the while the presidency has become an imperial presidency with absolute power and it ignores the constitution, I mean we have, I mean I mean we have not declared war the way the constitution says since World War II. Um, but um, and and Obama himself said, well, you know, I I've got the power, and no, you don't have the power, and nobody before you did since Roosevelt, uh, and this is a problem. But they all accept it because they don't want to give up that power. But the um, there there are two elements going on in in the police culture, um, and that is the the militarization aspect, uh, and that's one level, and and concomitant with it, and overlapping with it, and and, and building upon it, and, and and being used by it, and and, and both you know um, in, in in an interdependent relationship is another dynamic, which is the 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 rise in the in the ability of the police to use force to obtain compliance, which the law, they do not have a right to be complied with. 
They, you know, you don't have an obligation to simply comply, which is they give you a command, they bark a command, and you must comply. Um, you know, they they can give you a lawful order to stop committing a crime, but you know, like like when we see these people getting their windows busted out because they refused to step out of the car because they were pulled over for a seatbelt violation, the police are not supposed to be engaging in use of force at all. Um, it's supposed to be dependent upon the on on the actual. If, if the offense is not a violent offense, they shouldn't be using any force. And if you don't comply, you don't comply. Um, and if they if there's a problem with that, that actually leads to a real uh, criminal violation of the law. Well, that's fine too. But they don't have the right to take you by force. Uh, they only have the right to use force to prevent harm, and that's the and they're only supposed to use as much force as needed. To stop you from preventing harm. That's still the law, although it's being whittled away. But more importantly, it's the unwritten norms and practices of the departments that have been changing in the past 15 years, 20 years at most, um, that have, you know, they, they now say, and this all comes from the police unions and, and the police in, industry, they say they don't shoot to wound and they don't shoot to stop they only shoot to kill whenever they shoot they can shoot whenever they claim they feel fear um, they empty their magazine they keep shooting while the guy's down they 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 don't give you medical care when you're down on the ground after you've been shot 10 times in the head but they but they but 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 they violently handcuff you um, these things are not lawful uh, but they've been legitimized in the system and this is a problem um, and it's it, the unfortunate thing about Ferguson um, is that the racial dynamic, which is very real, which is the which is the disproportionate impact that the abuses of police have on certain demographics, right, is 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 taking such center stage that it's overlooking the other element, which is why the police even think they're legitimate. Le legitimate in shooting the way they shot Mike Brown, which is not race based. It, 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 this is their own police culture. Um, and when you add that to the to, to the inherent racist dynamics that the police uh, in our society are in, uh, you know, uh, embedded in, uh, it becomes disproportionately felt in a harmful way in those populations. But if we have to understand both of those dynamics um, independently as well as interdependently on how they work if we're ever going to solve this problem. Um, because you can get rid of all of the racist cops, you can get rid of all of the racist part of the culture and society, and the police shootings and the police abuses of force would continue to go on. You would just it would just become normalized in terms of distribution um, rather than disproportionately felt in the minority communities. Punk boy, any comments about the militarization of police? Uh, I don't know. It's, there, there's going to be an entire paradigm shift. It's not going to happen piecemeal, I don't think. I mean, something's got to change. And, um, there's there's going to be a point where we're not going to be able to do much about it. And that point, I think, is coming pretty soon. Yeah. A uh, key of H just asked a very important question on one of the chats is, is don't you feel like they are trying to legally change the culture of the law by creating these cases? Um, uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's even more than that. What they're doing is they're, is they are subtly changing the internal norms and unwritten policies. And then when they become accepted by the courts and normalized and accepted by the district attorneys, eventually they start writing them into policies little bit by bit. And then they start having them not in necessarily in legislated law, although at times even there, but usually first um, the courts then in appellate cases begin enacting that police culture generated norm rather than that legally enacted norm into the law. And then it becomes not only normalized, not only legitimized, but legalized formally. And that's a real problem.
Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, I mean, from up here in Canada, I mean, it's just, it, it, it boggles my mind. Uh, you know, when I saw that they pepper sprayed Luke, we are changed, Luke Wodowski last night, that, that was insane. Uh, the fact that mainstream media in Ferguson is not reporting shit on this. That you have all the, I'm glad all those live streamers are on the ground. The fact that they detained Bella uh, last night, searched her van, forced her to shut down. Now, let's yeah, talk about that. this. Since mm -hmm. this is a master class on live streaming, you have every right in North America to film the police in their line of duty. They cannot ask you to shut down. I know in Canada, numerous, numerous, numerous times, they ask me, uh, please don't videotape me please shut down. And I say the same thing like breathing because I've said it a million times. I have every right to, to film you in the line of duty. I am media and you're live to four or five continents right now. And the look on their face, now that's Canada. That's here in North America. I know if you're in Syria, if you're in Turkey, if you're in uh, Egypt, you'd be gunned down, right? So but in North, especially in the U.S., I mean, what's up with that? Talk about your rights as media or even as civilian. You have every right to film the police in their line of duty. Talk about that, both of you. Well, well you know, it's... Yeah, go ahead, Punk. Go, go, yeah. well, go ahead. It, go ahead it, what, I, what I was going to say is it's, it's, it's the primary focus of photography is not a crime and where it came from, which is Carlos Miller and now I uh, and a couple other people... But I've, I've added the public records part, which I think go hand in hand. Um, but but yeah, um, the, you absolutely do. You have the right to film or audio record any public official in their public capacity doing public business. And uh, and, and they do not like it. And uh, especially police, you know, they are. Uh, very resistant to it, and even when they're told that that's the policy, they still ignore it. They still seize your camera. They still threaten you with arrest. Um, and 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 if you go to photography is not a crime dot com, you you I mean you will see these things documented over time. Uh, you know, with the videos and the audio. Um, and of course, you know, it's what started off that whole thing with me in Alachua because I was arrested for recording with audio recording uh, under the wiretapping statute. Of course, like I said, I proved that I proved not only that uh, that I had a right in that context with the thing on the table open, but I actually proved in court that I could have secretly recorded him and been well within my rights. And they were really pissed off at that. So when I was arrested and then uh, Dee was saying that I should try to get them on uh, censorship and whatnot, but I, I got like a month ago, a letter in the mail. They must have been watching or listening or something and knowing that I was trying to get a lawyer to help sue them. Um, so they sent me a letter that said, it was just like an FYI kind of letter. It was just very odd that I got it and nobody else did. And it said like, you were not arrested, you were detained. You're only arrested if we decided to file charges. Yeah. Yet, 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 technically, in one sense of the word arrest, that's true. But in another sense, it's not. Any a detention is an arrest. It may not be a, a full on arrest and a completed arrest, but it is a arrest process. Uh, I mean, like, here's my this is my arrest here. And like, I'm well away from them. I'm actually got a, a zoom lens on the, the galaxy camera that has the big like optical zoom that goes out. So. I'm like oh, yeah. nowhere, near, nowhere near them, even though I'm filming them. This was and the then, night at the at, at the at the uh, at the Google. Yeah, and they just like swept me up with everyone else. They just like everybody here is under arrest for trespassing. Yet, if you look up uh, Penal Code six hundred two, which is the trespassing law, there's carved out a huge extension in it that says like, you know, everything in this statute does not apply to people involved in activities protected by the U.S. or California Constitution. Right. Right, but they, but no, the, the the use of trespass laws, not just on, but including on public property in public buildings. Uh, uh, this has become. I mean, I started learning that this well, was happening when I started Albuquerque, using it against yeah. me. Yeah, it's crazy yeah, that they're arresting people. I mean, they arrested me several times for trespassing in Alachua and, and Albuquerque in the, in the in the city hall in 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 the city commission in the city council meetings. Um, but this has become a norm around the country. 
uh, that you go into a public building and they don't like what you're doing, they'll they'll threaten to arrest you. And th- that's just absolutely absurd. It, 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 it makes a mockery of the, the, the trespass laws um, and the concept of public space. But then again, you know, they we know from Occupy that we don't even have public space anymore, let alone public buildings. Um, but, that's why uh, we moved it all online and they're trying to control that now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and look, if you allow them to take your rights away, they will. And rights were never given. They were always taken. Uh, and when you take them, you have to continue to hold on to them. So, so you know, it's a very, very uh, difficult and, and, and unfortunate dilemma we've got ourselves in because we've allowed our rights to be eroded. And, um, and now we have to fight to get them back. Yeah, and I'm glad today that I saw a tweet about the, uh, uh, they filed this morning uh, a $40 million lawsuit against the St. Louis Police Department for uh, unlawfully arresting uh, the civilian journalist uh, last night and throughout this whole series of protests the last two months. I think that's great, $40 million. What do you think of that lawsuit? And uh, can you surmise what, what uh, would be entailed in that uh, lawsuit there, Charlie and Punk Boy? I, I mean, it's got to, it's going to be a constitutional case. So I mean, I guess it would be First Amendment. Oh yeah, oh it'll be a First Amendment case, sure. Uh, it's it's all going to depend on having a good judge, uh, because a lot of judges really don't like First Amendment. Um, you got to remember, most that? judges are former prosecutors. And former prosecutors are, you know, not exactly the most, uh, you know, rights-oriented, justice-oriented law people out there. Yeah, because Punk Boy, we did a show shortly after you were arrested there at Google. And uh, I know I'm always creative with the law. In my parallel universe as a filmmaker turned live streamer, since 1980, I've been a union activist. I've dealt with the best, what we call in Canada, Bay Street labor lawyers, the number one address for labor lawyers, because all the unions are headquartered in Toronto, Bay Street's the Wall Street of Canada. Is that what, that must be why there's an Occupy Bay Street. Okay. Uh, well, that's another story. But the point being, I'm very creative with the law, uh, dealing with the best lawyers in Canada when it comes to labor law, uh, as you know, in my servitude as chief steward of my local, I handled 208 grievances and I lost none. So I have said numerous, numerous times when we were occupying um, here at Gopit Lodge in uh, Elsa Booktub that if they ever arrested me for live streaming, that I would actually, no matter what they charged me with, I would counter sue. I'm surprised that a lot of people don't counter sue. And I would charge them with censorship, and I'll break it down briefly in this, okay? First of all, I am an artist, you know, I am a filmmaker, right? And when I'm live streaming, I'm doing two very important things. One is the key to my case. One, as a filmmaker, using live stream as state-of-the-art filmmaking, I'm doing two things. I'm producing said film, a.k.a. stream, um, and I'm exhibiting it at the same time. Now, the fact that I, as a filmmaker, choose to exhibit my film on a web browser versus a regular cinema or in an abandoned warehouse or in the middle of the forest, well, that is my prerogative as an artist to to distribute it however I see fit. Now, here's the crux of the thing. In Canada, in a lot of provinces, there's very amazing legal jurisprudence against censorship in film exhibition. So I would charge here in Canada, I don't care what they would sue, uh, I mean, arrest me for and charge me with, I would counter sue with censorship based on that legal argument. And I've said that over and over again. I remember when we were being evicted, I was going to be on the grounds there. And it was a back in uh, November 22nd, 2000, uh, 23rd, 2011. That was eight days after Occupy Wall Street was arrested. And there was a huge rash for three weeks of the police 
evicting all the occupiers back in November 2011. And but the first thing they were targeting were the live streamers. And the fact that Occupy Wall Street went down, you know, for a couple hours, you know, and, and it practically declared martial law back on November 15th, 2011, just to evict Occupy Wall Street proves that. And I was taunting very seriously the police that we are not going to go fucking down. We are going to buck the fucking trend. And I not only told the Toronto police and everyone, you fucking arrest me when we're being evicted. Here's my court case. I outlined what I just said in great legal detail. I outlined so many legal precedent cases because really the case history of film censorship in film exhibition is really exhaustive in Ontario. So to me, uh, that's why I, I said, I'm glad you brought it up there, Punk Boy, that you, you research that type of countersuit argument in, under California law. Because I don't know, um, Charlie, you might know, censorship laws in the states, is that a federal or a state matter? In Canada, uh, it's be both. provincial. No, there'll be both. There's both. Of course, in federal, it's the First Amendment. Um, but, but you know, just to, on, on, the, on the chat a few minutes ago, as you began this, there was a really interesting discussion about uh, bringing these civil rights cases, uh, whether you're bringing them federally or, 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 or at state law. I mean, that's a strategic decision depending on your particular state and the particular case and the course you have. Usually, you're actually better off in federal court uh, on those kind of cases uh, than in state courts. Um, the, the laws tend to be stronger, uh, not necessarily in every case, but but they tend they tend to be uh, with the First Amendment. Um, but you know, it was it was asked, you know, with all of these violations, can't we be bringing a major civil rights case? And, and the answer is uh, yes. Uh, however. Uh, let me take a step back, but also recognize what the person responded to, and that it takes a lot of money to bring cases. Um, and that's true. Uh, but really, you can't bring one civil rights case to, to do these things. You have to bring a number of cases that are smaller, and then you have to build them strategically. It's called strategic litigation, and most lawyers are never taught this in law school. But you bring smaller cases to put together the pieces of the puzzle to bring a bigger case. Um, and that's how if, if, probably the most famous example of this and, and one of the few times it's been used uh, was, was Brown versus Board of Education, uh, the, you know, the civil rights case about, uh, you know, uh, education rights and, 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 and also uh, equal protection, you know, and, and those uh, uh those, those those kind of a things. I, it was not one case from one wrong. It was a uh, hundred cases brought to bring little precedents together to then bring about a very intended action uh, set well in advance of even having that case arise. And uh, what we need to do as people is, again, I, I can't stress this more, just like I was saying with the public records law, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a small snapshot of this very thing about strategic litigation, we've got to stop just doing protests. I don't mean stop protesting. Do it because it's important. It's part of the process. It gets things exposed. It gets people active. It gets them understanding. But we have to become more uh, creative and more strategic and we have to use the law as our weapon but to do that we have to do two things we have to recruit a team of lawyers from around the country willing to take on these cases including we have to educate them we have to get people going into law school with the intention of coming out to do civil rights cases and we need to start pooling our resources including small donations from each other into a central pot of money because it takes a lot of money to bring those cases and it's, and no, there's no lawyer that would do it for free but there's no lawyer that could do it for free because to take on those kind of cases is 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 an immense undertaking um, and we keep thinking the ACLU is going to do this for us. It's not. The ACLU doesn't do that anymore. It's not capable of doing it. It doesn't conceive of itself in doing that uh, anymore. We have got to build something new. Um, us, this activist network of people, we've got to recruit those lawyers. We've got to encourage those people to become <coughs> lawyers to do this. And we have got to raise the money uh, and, and, and bring the cases together. Uh, if we're going to do that, and and it is, it is a weapon that we have not taken advantage of.
Yeah, I, I love being creative with the law, and I love that uh, strategic uh, litigation. Again, in a nutshell, how would you, uh, nuts and bolts, sort of set that up? Well, for example, let's let's say you want to. Uh, um, well, let, let's take a public records one, for example. Let's say we want to prove um, that um, there's a right to certain records um, uh, that ought to already be recognized, but but it's not being enforced. Uh, if you go directly at that. Uh, the most you're going to get, even if you get a sympathetic judge and you win the case, is you're going to say that they committed a particular wrong at a particular time. You may get those records, but you're not going to change the law. You're not going to make a profound impact. It's not going to. It's not going to say that that entity has to stop doing this. It's not going to say that all entities have to stop doing it. It may have a precedential value that 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 carries on, and that's the key. So what you do is you say this piece of this goal uh, is a precedent that we want out of this one case. Then we take another case over here independently, and we get this piece over here. So this particular part of a record. We, we say in this litigation is our focus. This piece of a record is our focus. This piece of a record is our focus. And then we come together with those three precedents and we take on another case and we tie them together. Um, and that's just in, from a public. So same thing with your right to pub, public space, because the courts are ex con conceding this loss of public space. So we have to take a hundred different cases about people being denied access to public space from many different perspectives and get small precedent. See, the courts won't give you that big precedent in one fell swoop. They're very conservative in a, in, in, in a they won't move that far. But if you build it up gradually and then you put it all together, you, you, can, you can do that. And that's the only way we're going to get those rights back through the law. Does that make sense? Sorry, I was just typing something. No, uh, yeah, Punk Boy, you have some stuff to add? Questions? There, am I on now? Okay, uh, no, I was in the bathroom, so, but I just heard you were talking about strategic litigation. Um, yeah, they, they, they make sure there's a big barrier to entry, like there's supposed to be equal protection under the law, but that doesn't apply to the law as as you're allowed to use it because there's such a huge financial barrier to entry to do anything legally unless you're just defending yourself which they will provide you a public defender who <clears throat> half the time doesn't doesn't do much for you i mean i i had something they were trying to charge me with years ago and it was completely false but they wanted me to plead to the charges and i'm like well isn't there supposed to be some integrity in the courts like you're asking me to plead to these charges, so to basically go into the courtroom and lie to say the charges are true and plead guilty to something that is obviously not true. Like, so I fought for a year to like to to have those charges thrown out, and I'm like, I'll plead to 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 this because it's true. You know, you're not charging me with it, but like this is what I'll cop to, and, and because this is what the, the fact of the of the matter was. And after a year, they basically amended their charges and uh, up the first ones. Yeah, no, and that's so a that's I a ended notorious up being able problem. to get it expunged and everything because it was bullshit. It's a notorious and the problem. The public defender just worse. wanted me to push to it. I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, I'll go to trial. Like, I'll sit there, you know, even even with the stuff you're charging me with. I'll, you know, I'll go in there and I'll explain to them, like, you know, it's not true what they're charging me with. But when it was true, like a few months back, like I was doing this ethically and there's, you know, you know, even even though I was breaking the law, you still shouldn't put me in jail for it because, you know, be, because I wasn't a bad person for it. Kind of like I would have had the jury like crying and, and, and letting me go because there's that whole jury notification where like it's not you on trial for breaking the law as much as it, or it's not just that but it's also the law every time is on trial so it's well, whether yeah. or not the law should be applied in this case and so you you could see you could find someone you know guilty of actually doing the crime but if you don't think that the law is is valid that it is a crime you could still find them not guilty and let them go Right, but of course we we got two problems here, and, and I'm going to address that last part first. 
the courts don't like that concept of jury nullification. And they won't let you tell the jury that. They won't let your lawyer hint that. And the judge yeah, will say, exactly. you have to follow the law. If this is and this is and this is, you must find them guilty. That's not the concept of a jury. This is a, a, a very recent historical twist on the concept of a jury. But it doesn't mean that they the juries can't do it on their own and don't ever do it on their own. Some juries do. But the, the other problem is, is you were talking about the, uh, you know, how, how uh, you know, public defenders really want you. And it's a game. It's a game of, of bargaining and, plea, and pleading down and, and overcharging. So you plead down to something higher than they could have gotten in the first place. And it's not just the public defenders and the prosecutors that are at fault here. It's also the judges, because a lot of judges, if you don't take a plea what they will do is they will when when you do get found guilty by going and it's a real risk when you do go to jury trial that you might be found guilty because people have given in to authority and it's very hard to overcome that. Um, but 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 those but those judges who who say well, you should have taken a plea will often punish you harder for having wasted in their view the resources of the court. For being found guilty for standing on, which is completely contrary to the way the system is supposed to work, but that has become the norm. Um, it's very, very. I mean, we have the whole system is fundamentally corrupted. That everyone can agree with. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, someone made a comment before about you know one person, one one good person can bring the system down, and 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 I can't stress that more. Um, but with one caveat, one person can bring a system, one very persistent person, uh, you know, a very consistent person uh, who, who, who can really go for the jugular. And really, I, I, I can't turning the law on there. Them you are threatening the violence again. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. But uh, but but using the law as your weapon, you know, our weapon is the law, you know, uh, in this war. Uh, but but if you one person can take a corrupted system right to the brink, right? One person can do that. If they, uh, it's not easy, and believe me, they're going to go hard after you, and it's not easy to be that one person. But you can't push it over the brink. So one person can get it there. It's going to take a movement to then knock it over. But the fact that one person can get it there. Imagine what a hundred people can do who are actually thinking like that and strategically acting. Um, you know, it, it can be done. It's not easy. It's not easy to fight this fight, but it needs that's, to be fought. You know, Dustin Slaughter, that's why his project is called the David versus Goliath project. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You want to post a link on the live chat? Oh, oh, I don't what, know what's it called is. there, Punk Boy, for those watching uh, in the archives? It's, it's either David versus Goliath Project or David and Goliath Project, something like that. By who? Davy and Goliath. That was that Christian uh, animated show. I remember. <laughs> oh, gee, Davy. <laughs> well, that, that was Gumby gee, there. Davy Crockett. Oh, and I'm shouting because I forgot I, I switched. Uh, I had the mic on the camera on, but I think I switched it to this. It should be this one now, right? Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, okay. So you guys should hear me clearer, and then since it's not going through the mini-cam for the microphone, it should just uh, not have the background noise anymore. Yeah, it's uh, really beautiful and a lot sexier, brother. <laughs> well, I'll just do my Barry White thing, then. <laughs> I'm looking for pepper. Sorry, I haven't eaten all day. Well, I slept all day, and then now I'm trying to find... The only seasonings that exist in the U.S., which is salt and pepper. Oh, there they are on top of the stove. I actually saw, I don't know if it was a commercial. It was last night. I don't know if it was on the internet or what, but a cop pulls the car. Oh, no, it was a commercial with those two uh, internet um, uh, guys. I can't remember what uh, company um, the, you, the you ads saw, for. I sent you that video of Gavin Syme, that guy in uh, Washington State who was running for office there i don't think he's on the ballot but he just like trolls the government there all the time and he pulls oh, over yeah. that cop oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, right 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 there. right right yeah I, I remember that yeah. yeah that was great no this was actually a commercial ad on tv you know with the, you know remember the guy that's up in the up in the roof and and he looks down and he's flirting with the girl and the other guy the it geeks right 
Well, it's them in a car, and they're pulled over by a cop. And the and the and the geeky one is well, they're both geeky, but the but the the more uh, ethnic one, the Asian uh, you know one. Uh, is is in the passenger seat eating a burrito, and he says, "This is not spicy enough. Can you put some pepper spray on this?" <laughs> that must be a local commercial because I've never seen. No, that. it's a national. It's the first time I've seen it. It's a na- it's it's for one. Of, I can't remember what company it's for, but it's a national. It's a big big one. But I think I first saw it last night, the first time. Somebody probably put it on YouTube. Oh, uh, it was so it, it was hilarious. So, what else went on this weekend uh, in Ferguson? A, a, a lot of well, this was planned for a while, and maybe Charlie knows more about you know uh, getting a lot more people there, and uh, certainly a lot more live streamers. It was good to that Vlad is there, uh, Tim Pool is there, Luke Rodowski. A lot of people have come in, and. Uh, Hundreds, if not thousands, more. Uh, Charlie, give us. They've been planning this weekend for a while. Yeah, yeah. Since for before the Mike month. Brown shooting, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all a conspiracy. Uh, no, for for about a month. Yeah, they've been uh, a little bit more than a month, I guess, that they've been planning this uh, this weekend for a, for a large gathering. Uh, and a lot of people did show up, and a lot of streamers uh, did show up. Uh, uh, it's why I had picked this weekend to, to head out there, um, and um, you know, since I was incarcerated during half of it, I, I missed it. But I I know that the beginning of the weekend was supposed to start Friday. Uh, there was supposed to be a a a, 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 a protest outside of the district attorney's office. I, I missed it, so I don't know how that went. And then there was a march to downtown St. Louis uh, Saturday morning. Uh, so the first I saw was last night, um, and last night you had actually a very large crowd outside of the police department in Ferguson with absolutely no problems, and then a spinoff uh, march down to the Quickie Mart or whatever it was, um, uh, protesting the thing in Shaw. The Quickie Mart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, but 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 protesting the the, the recent killing um, uh, and uh, you know the one from just the other night. And yeah, that, I didn't see. Is there a video of that one? Because I, I don't think I've seen. Yeah, the revolutionary I don't know the Z, specifics of it. Revolutionary Z's videos are up there. He was also pepper sprayed for the second time in three days uh, there. Um, oh, but he loves and, you know, it. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's getting. He's starting. You know, it's just like you know eating Thai food. You know, you the first time you eat it, it's too hot, but you eat it a couple of times, and it's not so hot anymore. I, I don't want to make light. I mean, let me tell you that OC spray is is nasty stuff. Nasty, nasty, no, nasty, I, I, nasty. I, I, stuff. I heard on one of the streams last night. I think it was Tim Pool's stream. Uh, a formula. Uh, it was. Uh, this is what they're using in Ferguson. It's a. Uh, Fifty percent milk, uh, Maalox or what, what's that uh, thing? Uh, yeah. and then water. Yeah, 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 yeah. you don't want to use water. Pure no, water. no, 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 no. Oh. Uh, but it's the Maalox. Water just spreads but, it. But get the get the uh, the unscented or unflavored one. Uh, yeah. Just a regular. You basically, just need a yeah. You basically just need a a, a a mildly weak base to counteract it. Yeah, but water is the worst, worst, worst thing you can do. It just spreads it around, and oh man, uh, I, 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 I'm telling you that is not fun stuff. And for tear gas, you can use like white vinegar in a cloth uh, to cover your face with, so that it won't get into your lungs very, very easily. And I don't know why the vinegar is is what counteracts it with that. And if you happen to inhale tear gas and your lungs are burning, I just found this out from experience in Oakland. Smoking, and I don't know if it goes for, I'm sure Marlboro's would probably make it worse, but if you smoke like a natural American spirit or probably just any like natural tobacco, it stops the burning in your lungs for some reason. I don't know why, but it did. Probably because it kills the lung cells. (laughs) No, actually, you know, I I had cancer a few years back and it was uh, Kaposi's sarcoma, which is a blood vessel cancer that also manifests in your lungs. And so there's a specific like chemotherapy that they can give you that was actually developed here in San Francisco um, if you get it in your lungs because that's when it will like, you know, take you out really fast and you won't have much of a chance. And no, so yeah, they, w- they would have given me that specific new chemo thing if it, if it would have showed up in my lungs. But in all of the bronchoscopies that I got, 
they asked me like I, I thought you said you were a smoker and I said well I am and like how much you smoke I said well less than a pack a day but that's because American spirits last about twice as long as a regular cigarette um, and they said like I do not have smokers lung they could not see any evidence in my lungs that I'm a smoker and it's because I don't smoke carcinogenic uh, Marlboros or anything that they have like 5,000 added chemicals into them just to like addict people and hook them in and and burning agents and saltpeter and all the other crap they put in the other ones. So yeah. the law makes them right on their box that it says, you know, no chemicals additives does not mean it's a safer cigarette. We're required to say this by law, but it turns out that it, it is safer. And one other thing for the, if, if you know, there's going to be a lot of tear gas and you get an actual gas mask, bring a real gas mask. They have no, NATO certified no. Israeli ones are really good, which is the one I have. Now, people forget, as part of a gas mask, there's hundreds of different filters. So you sort of have to find the right filter to put in the actual gas mask that... Uh, what What is uh, tear gas made out of? Um, well, they call it CS gas, but I think that's the company that makes it. Something Solutions or... Um, I don't know what the compound is. Let me look it up. Yeah, because... Uh, there's hundreds of filters that filter all different things for the gas mask. Now, if you have a beard like I do, uh, you don't get that proper seal, so it doesn't really help, but it's better than nothing. Uh, that yes, uh, in a lot of situations, you know, a thick uh, mask, you know, cloth mask and uh, Water in a pinch. Uh, yeah, the um, uh, I like your idea of if there's tear gas of using vinegar. That's acidic, so that must uh, negate the tear gas versus water, which is more of a base, uh, neutral. Because uh, remember, the pH scale goes from acidic to... Seven base. is neutral, yeah. Uh, now, that formula for if you get sprayed uh, was... 50% milk, most the most of the other thing is the, the Maalox or whatever, the regular one, not the flavored one, and a, and a touch of water as part that? of the mix. And then you spray it directly while you... Now, there's a proper eye wash thing. It's sort of like those portable uh, uh, oxygen things, but it's smaller just for the eye. And then, like, just like open your eye and just put that in ideally you know I, you know if it's just in a water bottle how you apply it is very important but you got to be prepared for it any other yeah. health and safety uh, things uh, Charlie when it comes to uh, violent police actions like that well I, I you know what I want I, I want to raise money to get one of those Israeli blue press uh, uh, bulletproof vests. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I saw that thing. I just don't want to yeah. support them by buying it from them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not the Israeli guard. It's just a company, uh, but but I, you can get them from other places. It's probably the best made one, though. <laughs> the one that says press on it, right? It that says press cool. on it, yeah. And how much yeah. do those go for? Like, there was like 700 bucks. Like, yeah, up, almost up to $1,000. That's something. it? I thought it'd be way, way more. That's not too bad, actually. A thousand? Well, oh, shit, no, I, thousand know that, I know that, but I always thought, oh, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. It's good to know a price. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not it's not overly it's it, it's 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 not easy to afford it on your own. But it's not something that's out of range of people would help donate. Um, but I'd like to have it not only for for real purposes with when it's gonna when the shit's gonna hit the fan and it's gonna, uh, but 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 also to send a message, you know, <laughs> okay, to make so a there's... point. There's the formula for tear gas I just put in the chat there. It's chlorobenzomalonitrile. C10H5CIN2. It is a cyanocarbon that is the defining component of tear gas commodity, referred to as CS gas. Yeah. Cyan, as in the color cyan, C-Y-A-N, uh, like carbon. Like cyan, cyan, cyan and rod. So, yeah. 
Nitric gas is a nonspecific term for any chemical that is used to temporarily incapacitate through irritation of eyes and a respiratory system. It is used as a handheld sprayer, can be fired from canisters that heat up, spewing out an aerosol cloud at a steady rate. Popular tear gases include the eye irritants orthochlorobenzaldehyde mononitrile, chloro, blah, 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 CN gas, and BF and CR gas. Among a list of these substances, these three have become of greater importance than the other because of their effectiveness and low risks when used. Yeah, I got a bad lung infection for three months off of that shit. Go in the other room. Uh, let's see. Today, CS has largely replaced CN as the most widely used tear gas internationally. Citation needed. Decontamination. At room temperature, tear gases are white, solid substances. They are stable when heated and have a low vapor pressure. Consequently, they are usually dispersed as aerosols. All of them have low solubility in water and can be dissolved in several organic solvents. Hydrolysis of CN is very slow in a water solution, especially if alkali is used. Um, CS is rapidly hydrolyzed in water solution. Half-life pH is 7 in about 15 minutes at room temperature and extremely rapid when alkali is added. Half-life pH 9 about, is about 1 minute. CR is hydrolyzed on only to a negligible extent in water solution. Blah, 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 blah. Where's decontamination of material after contamination with CS can be done in a 5 to 10% soda solution or 2% alkaline solution. And this type of decontaminant is probably for like your clothes and stuff, which is why they say to put, I've heard people say put Coca-Cola in it. They probably, it's just from the, from the carbon dioxide and the, and the soda water, I'm guessing. Um, let's see, cannot be accomplished, e.g. contamination rooms or furniture. Then the only other means is by intensive air exchange, preferably with hot air. Exposed streets and sidewalks will have toxic and irritating CS powder that will be stirred into the air by traffic and pedestrians long after the cloud is dissipated and should be washed away with water. In contrast to human beings, domesticated animals generally have a low se sensitivity to tear gases. Dogs and horses can therefore be used by police can can therefore be used by police for riot control even when tear gas is used. Really, so it doesn't affect dogs and horses? Mm. And, yeah, and someone and someone points out it's different from pepper spray, which is OC spray, which is uh, 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 oleoresin uh, capsicum. Uh, and, and, you know, let me tell you, 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 you take a, uh, an undiluted tiny like drop of that and you put it on your on the tip of your tongue and you'll you'll forget the burning sensation you'll immediately go into heaving uh it would make you sick in a in a without any time delay um and that stuff is 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 is, is painful real painful Cap capsaicin is the active ingredient in pepper spray and is a chemical derived from the fruit of plants in the capsicum genus including chilies yeah, yeah peppers capsicum. synthetic analog of capsaicin Pelagonic pel 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 acid vanillidamide, blah, blah, long name after that, is used in another version of pepper spray known as Pava spray, which is used in the UK. Another synthetic counterpart of pepper spray, pelagonic acid morphalide, was developed and used widely in Russia. Those sound like they're a lot more toxic than any of the natural pepper sprays. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Its effectiveness compared to natural pepper spray is uncertain and is reported to have caused injuries. Well, yeah, and pepper spray will cause death in, other, in, in a lot of people who have reactions to it. Now, now a little while ago, uh, D, you had asked something about what happened over the weekend, and we got through what sort of we knew about things that had happened, but it's what's about to happen that's going to get interesting because uh, they, they're, 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 they're cranking it up a notch beginning tonight, I believe, but they're, they're going to be doing some very deliberate uh, civil disobedience. Um, I'm not sure what. Uh, but uh, that's that's what's been uh, been declared. So starting tonight or into tomorrow, um, I just don't know what. And of course, you now have two fronts. You have Ferguson and you have Shaw, uh, and things are happening on both. Uh, and Sh Ferguson has actually calmed down. The police there are tolerating things more, although it, it, it's random because one night they'll just start going nuts. But uh, like last night, it was very 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 calm uh, despite the large numbers and the police just stood there but once once they got the Shaw uh, the police came in with their real you know fascist you know clanking the the the, the 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 sticks on the ground with their you know riot gear on and you know forming 
you know, boxes around the people and uh, so still uh, nobody gives a shit about the other kid who was killed. Like well, that's what I'm saying. Mom died. Like nothing. Like uh, nobody. Nobody gave a shit about him. Well, that's Which, why Shaw. Shaw is his right. memorial. Von Derek Meyer yeah. is his name, and Shaw Street uh, is where his memorial is, and that's in South St. Louis. What's the What's the relationship uh, between South St. Louis and Ferguson? It's pretty close. Yeah, they're they're fairly close. I mean, Ferguson is a little bit to the east uh, and south. Um, I mean, there's a, there's there's just a ton of little municipalities around there, but they're they're not far from each other because they walked from Ferguson to Shaw. Well, I'm glad a lot of live streamers. I, I saw this great list of Ferguson live streamers. Uh, it's on WordPress. Uh, I have the link at D Shanger uh, Twitter account. Uh, it's a great index. Um, I got it goes to 15 plus. Not just a new. It's not even a complete list because uh, on um, the other night there was a brand new live streamer, uh, Rights of Man. And uh, so many of them are like just picking up the live stream like nobody's business. Uh, and uh, it, so it's great to see a lot of seasoned pros there because uh, Rebel Z, uh, Jan there, he's originally from uh, Chicago, I believe. Uh, now, Mustafa from Argus Radio, is he originally from St. Louis or where's Mustafa from? Yeah, he's from St. Louis area. Uh, and then someone just asked, someone just asked, uh, made a statement. Lights, lights out, uh, DNB on the thing. Uh, you know, Fer Ferguson has its own municipal police force. It's also in St. Louis County, uh, and therefore the St. Louis County police are also involved uh, often. Uh, in fact, they've taken charge of most of the protests uh, for the past few weeks. And then there's the St. Louis Metro Police who actually have been, from what I understand, the more recent problematic uh, department uh, that's been uh, doing the, the pepper spraying. Uh, so the link I just put in the chat, um, for people who have an Android, like you do, D, um, it's actually our mobile app for for my Friday show. Oh, Probably nice. need to copy the whole thing. Wake um, the fuck up. Yep. And so, well, unofficially, I call it Wake the Fuck App. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's cool it's like it's got a button that will uh, just dial the show uh, the only thing I haven't figured out how to do is to get it to have a, a, a tab where the show will be live if it's on because it's got a different it has a different address every time it's live so it's really hard to, to get it to do that so as soon as it's posted um, up on the show page at Blog Talk Radio it, go, it goes out via their RSS feed which is how it picks up the show list um, but it's also got, there's a web link page, which has links to like, we are change. And, uh, I, I think I need to put global revolution in there. I haven't done that. So there'll be an update and I can't push out updates cause I'm not paying this company that helped that has this app designer program. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to like update it and then people that have it, I'll have to post it again. Um, but if you follow the Facebook page, which there's a tab in there for the Facebook page, there's a Twitter tab, which has, uh, which has sub tabs in it with the show's Twitter. Which I need to give you the password to Charlie so that you can add stuff to it. Um, cause okay. I bas basically the, the show's Twitter has floundered cause I've been just doing everything from my own account. Um, but you're, you and John are both able to post on the show page on Facebook now, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so the only convention I've tried to use with the posts is like, if it's an update to a previous story, like the first line I put, episode update and then whatever the subject of the episode was and then whatever pertinent information like on the lines that underneath that that's the only convention i've been using for posting um i think you you or john put something up the other day and i just edited it to add the episode update line with the yeah, you, yeah, 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 Perky or ferguson I, or something yeah um, I but yeah that's the only convention i've been using on that um for the show um and then I think the app also has, there's another tab for, uh, oh, for some RSS feed. So I pulled in like the, I think it's a popular resistance feed or, uh, acronym TV, Dennis's show. Um, yes. Yeah. From we are yeah, change. Oh, and the storm clouds gathering. I put the storm clouds gathering feed in it also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Acronym TV is also on usually right before, uh, my show on uh, Occupy TV. 
Yeah, Dennis is a really cool guy. I met him. Uh, apparently, I'd met him briefly here at Occupy San Francisco, but didn't realize who he was in, in the movement in general. I thought he was just like some... I mean, there were so many people like, oh, I'm making a documentary film that like you never heard from ever after after this stuff actually started to go around. Like, so I didn't realize that he was the same guy who I ran into in D.C., who I saw this dude was sort of like a prosumer camera, like giving a report. Like he, he had gone up to one of the buildings and like sat his camera on something so that because he didn't have a tripod with him and then like grabbed his mic and was doing this report. But he's like cursing in the middle of his report. And so like. You know, that was one of my things is I was always like foul mouth on my stream. One, because that's just <laughs> what I was feeling at the time. And two, because that way they can't pilfer my shit for the mainstream audiences if I'm constantly cursing. Um, <laughs> so like I seen this other dude cursing into his camera and I went up and introduced myself. And that was when he told me, oh, my thing's Zachary MTV and whatnot. And then he talked about the documentary he was making, which when it finally came out, I was it was right around the time of... Uh, the 2012 NATO summit and I had been in touch at that point where they had gotten in touch with me, the people at link TV who were actually bought out by one of the PBS affiliates in the center of in Sacramento or something here that either they bought this, the, the PBS affiliate or the PBS affiliate bought them or something. So I don't really see much of link TV going around in anymore. Um, but they were sort of trying to move to like a PBS donation pledge business model so they were trying to get people to pledge donations to their to their uh to their tv network their cable channel and so i they were asking me if i had any like you know polished and edited pieces that they could put up either on their site or to play on their on their cable channel which i didn't all my stuff was like unedited live streams and everything but Dennis's thing had just come out, so I hooked them up, and they actually used his. Uh, he gave them a bunch of copies to give out as sort of like, as you know, like the tote bag type of gift. So like he was able, he was able to get to. He had a distribution platform through them for a bit. So when you gave a certain amount of money to to Link TV, they'd send you one of his movies. Yeah, and I think that that got him some exposure, and now he's like part of the Young Turks network, and you know he's he's yeah. He's, Got it. His stuff's going good, and I still can't crowdsource forty bucks a month to pay for the. Yeah, I mean, I'm paying almost five hundred dollars a year now to to do that show, and I have one subscriber, so I'll, I'll make a dollar an episode. Yeah, it's 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 too hard. I mean, we. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people. No, no, no. Yeah, that's one thing, but also, you know, people need to. We need to learn as a as a as a a movement. That five bucks here and there, if you can afford it, can add up to other, you know, to things when it gets combined. And yeah, the uh, Patreon service, the reason I know about it was because that's what Dennis uses for Acronym TV mainly is the uh, Patreon where you can either ask for like a subscription fee, like a certain amount per month, or you do what, what mine was set as was like a per work fee. So like it's like whenever an episode would go out. It would just deduct whatever the people had. But you can also set, like, a maximum amount of donation per month. So if, like, you know, I'm, I was saying, like, I would just do, like, a dollar an episode. That way, if I did, if I happen to do a show every Friday in the month, then it's four bucks maximum that they'd yeah. be charged. And then if I only did three, because usually I'd, every third or fourth show, I'd either take off or play some rerun or something. Um, that, you know, there'd be, like, three, maybe four bucks at the most a month and if yeah. that and I haven't I haven't even been keeping that up there's you know I'm probably five dollars five five or ten bucks down because I haven't been like charging the one the one person who pledged yeah it's right and, and, and it's also you know a lot of people who actually do these things are, are are also not the people who are inclined to be asking for money all the time you know I, I hate the concept so I don't really like to do it yeah, yeah I mean well, I wouldn't have been to uh, Philly or New York or well, Chicago. Uh, Roseanne sort of gave me some money for that because I was asking for money in, in public. I tweet my donation, like, and she kind of pulled me aside quietly and said, "What do you need?" And so she gave me some money. So I, that's how I got to Chicago. But then I got to Philly. Oh, huh? the donations I ended up getting for that just having for pocket money because somebody had miles and they donated she donated me her miles to get out to Philly and back but yeah, yeah. The, the days of like yeah, no, it, donations all of a sudden are just not happening anymore yeah apparently Bella was it, able to crowdsource her, her data fund until they shut her down yeah 
Well, I mean, it's it's not the it's not the same as when Occupy was in full swing and there was a a, a consciousness of a movement. I think that's part of the problem. There's no there's a movement under under a foot, but there's no consciousness of being a movement because it's all online now too. In part, yeah, yeah. It's also very it's it's not focused. It's it, it's here and there and and this and that. And there's no sort of a central central theme or, or or I mean there's a central theme. It's just not a there's no slogan. You know it's uh, there's no uh, and there's also no um, mainstream media recognition of it as a a single entity. You know, um, but that kind of a conceptualization uh, gives people the, uh, the the feeling that it's you know you're donating to something. Uh, as opposed to a million different options out there. Yeah. Well, Occupy sort of turned into what sort of the model of anonymous is because like it's now a decentralized movement and it's basically a bunch of small operations. So like little causes that pop up in the communities, which have de facto leaders and, you know, they come and they go and, you know, there's, there's a network of people who are constantly participating in smaller little operations. Right. A lot of how anonymous operates. Well, and 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 but and that's also important because it's 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 taking those small little local things and not keeping them just limited to the people on the ground locally, but using the internet and our our international presence and our ability and being able to turn the power of thousands of people into the support for, for at very little per person in the thousand to to a lot more than anybody on the ground in one local community could ever come up with. Um, yeah. Whether it be it, people power or money power or or any of that, and it's it's made a difference PR wise, at least for anonymous. Like for a while, they were doing a bunch of like smaller, more personal like causes, like the, the you know uh, I forget what they were calling her uh, Jane Doe, uh, you know the, the 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 girl who was raped in Steubenville. Like I mean that went that went a long way for like anonymous PR because I mean that that only became a national story because of us mm. and little weird side benefits. So like in 1996, I was a roadie for a band from Chicago, even though one of the guys lived here, which is where I met them. Um, but so they used to also work with the girl who funny enough was on Roseanne's show, but who was also a porn star. You probably heard of Tracy Lords. Oh yeah. Uh, so Tracy Lords was on the on tour with the same band that I was a roadie for in '96, but she was on them with their '95 tour because she was like DJing back then before she started doing music herself. Okay. Um, she was also she was also like Roseanne gave her a break and like put her on as a waitress in the at the Lanford lunchbox or whatever her loose meat sandwich was uh, shop was called. Um, okay. But it turns out Tracy Lords was from Steubenville, and she had been raped as a teenager, and never came forward because when she came out to a few people about it, she was lambasted and demonized the same way that that poor girl was, and she thinks that internalizing all that stuff was what led her into the porn industry, and uh, and part of her like taking back control of her sexuality was by becoming a porn star and. And, you know, all the stuff that came with that. And so she came out about that story because of us in Steubenville. I talked mm. with her a little bit on Twitter. It's just like, you know, we're like one degree of separation apart through the band and through Roseanne and now through Steubenville. It's like, you know, it's just just odd tie-ins to all these stories that, you know, help a lot more people than we realize sometimes. Yeah. Roseanne is not really on board on the uh, Ferguson issue, though. Well, I mean, you know, me and her don't see eye to eye on everything, but we're... No, um, I, I... Yeah. I'll work I'm, with anybody on is, a particular yeah. issue. If if, 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 people, if we see eye to eye on an issue, I'll work with them on that issue. I'll disagree yeah. with them on another issue, and I'll openly talk about it, and that's a good yeah, thing. And, yeah, with Palestine, too. She's she's sort of Zionist in her view on that. And yeah, yeah. It, it might just be through ignorance and stuff, but I, I, I oh, don't no, know. That's right. it, would, it, it would seem that she would know that... The, all the stuff that we know from both sides, but yeah, I she take still it back. It's, the it's, whole it wasn't thing. Ferguson. Yeah, it wasn't Ferguson. It was she got into a fight with Revolutionary Z over Palestine. A comment on Palestine. Yeah, that's what that's, it was. I, I don't touch that subject with her because I like to stay on good right. terms with her because I like yeah, her a lot still. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, that's one of the things that we'll probably never see eye to eye on. I mean, 20 years ago, maybe when they were getting shit from Hezbollah, when, I mean, it still wasn't a level playing field, but at least there was some argument on the other side that maybe there, maybe the rockets that they were shooting back then were, were actually hurting people. But ever since they've been cut off completely from having any arms like that, like this whole rocket argument is just asinine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it's, it's a total asymmetrical warfare. Yeah, it's and, and and that's a that's that see that situation is never going to be fixed if we keep going about it in the same way that we keep going about it. Uh, it's just going to fester on and fester on and fester on. <laughs> Hold on, I got to help my cat get on the table. The chair that he uses to get up on is like three feet further than it usually is. So I'm not sure what's going on there in Ferguson, but they've all they've all met up the two marches. I don't know they're under some underpass or some thing, and there's deep fog. And uh, but apparently Cornell West gave a pretty uh, big speech tonight and uh, encouraged people to get into the civil disobedience stuff. So uh, I, I don't know what's what's going to happen. Yeah, oh, Ryan. No problem, Key. I hope. I hope. I hope I can. Uh, I hope I can contribute positively. Uh, yeah, Ryan was talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, the two marches of, of, of uh, two large, two large marches, and uh, that have merged. It's got the police scrambling. Seems like they're getting more candlestine. The uh, Ferguson uh, protesters, and uh, they are totally. Uh, Getting more organized, and uh, and the police are scrambling, as uh, Rise uh, pointed out, and I love that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just a matter of time. Now there was also the uh, talk earlier in the week. I think around midweek. It was before the shooting of on Derek on um, Wednesday night, early in the evening. I believe it was around 7.30. Um, of declaring martial law in St. Louis. But then an unexpected thing happened. Um, the World Series semifinals, for those that don't know, the baseball ones. St. Louis made it into the National League Championship, the semis, against um San Francisco and coincidentally game one and two of that was last night and tonight <coughs> in St. Louis which is interesting because with the World Series in America there's thousands upon thousands of uh, media in town so it was just talk and I guess with all the media in town they just don't want to uh, deal with that you can have a Tiananmen Square thing uh, oh, cause, exactly because remember why Tiananmen Square became so big back in that weekend of June 1st, 2nd, 1989 is a few days before Gorbachev was making a well, historic it, visit to Beijing. It was a month, it was a month before. Uh, no, no, it was that it, week. That's it, why it, there was it was, it was in it, it was in May. It was a, they were there. The, the protests began in April and the media was already arriving and prepared for Gorbachev's visit, which was in May. And by that time, the millions are already had gathered up in the square, and the and the media stayed. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks before in May. No, but I was referring to the actual massacre that weekend of June first and second. You have all that media. I they think were Gorbachev still there. Yeah. Has actually a lot arrived a few days before that, I believe, when he actually arrived. It was that so week. Do, Tank do man you know happened. his role in that, right? You know his role in the Tiananmen Square stuff, right? Who's? Charlie's. Yes, Charlie, you talked about it earlier. Uh, uh, maybe delve into it. I just want to finish making the point that I think that's why they backed off of martial law in, in St. Louis. Uh, because you could have a Tiananmen Square type thing with all that media into town. Uh, but go ahead. Tell us your role. You touched upon it earlier in this show. Go ahead, uh, Charlie. 
Well, first, I, I, I agree. I, I think that uh, with with the, with the ma major mass media for the baseball game, that they're going to be very, very uh, uh, hesitant to overstep the bounds. Uh, but once that media is gone, uh, it's not going to be so easy. But no, in uh, in 1989, um, I had been for a while talking about wanting to be active, and you know, I was talking about starting a newspaper, and I wanted to get involved in government and things like that. I tried to get involved in student government only to learn how corrupt that was. But, you know, I, for years in college in the 80s, I was looking for someone to teach me how to, how to be, you know, active, how to be a citizen, how to lead. You know, I needed someone. Well, I was looking for someone to lead me. And in the 80s, there, it was the era of apathy and, and there really wasn't anybody around. About the only real movement that had any momentum at the time was the, uh, the stuff about um, uh, 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 Central America. Uh, on university campuses, but beyond that, there was almost no activism. And uh, with you know, in April, uh, you got to understand, you know, this is the early days of CNN, uh, early days of of, of C-SPAN really being on cable networks that people were watching, um, and so all of these networks were out there live, twenty four hours um, in early April, uh, preparing for the Gorbachev visit. Uh, and in early April, what happened was is that Hu Yaobang died, and Hu Yaobang was a, a political uh, government uh, official who in the 70s um, stood up for, in, in 76, there was a student uprising, and he stood up for the students. And so he was worshipped by the student, uh, uh, the student population, and he died in April, and uh, the students went to go... Uh, to, to Tiananmen Square to have a memorial for him, and the government said no, uh, because we've got to have the, we got the national international media here. We don't want to you know we don't want you know you you riffraff, and so the students reacted by saying really well we're going to go, and uh, they demanded their right to be there, and they they it then spread to the demand for free free speech rights and freedom of the press rights and anti-nepotism and anti-corruption in government and all of this start, stuff started to spiral um, it was just a, it was just waiting to happen it needed that that sort of catalyst um, and then by may early may they Perfect had million story. person mar march oh yeah so they had er a million person marches and uh, and of course you had the international media there watching all this and, um, you know, uh, it, it just grew and grew and grew. And the government was very wary of, uh, of cracking down uh, because of all that attention. And, uh, but they were getting more and more frustrated over time. Um, and, uh, of course, when they first sent in, I mean, I, I knew something bad was going to happen. And so I began talking to people. I said, we've got to organize something. I didn't know what to do. I just said, let's organize America. And I actually got these college, uh, you know, guidebook, you know, all the colleges listed. And I found out where they all were. And I started putting the word out. And this is the early days of the Internet. Uh, I met with the Chinese students who were leading the protests on campus. And then they were mostly grad students in physics and chemistry and engineering. So they were very, very versed with the Internet. And so we began using the Internet to spread um, ideas around the uh, – the internet uh, via the, 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 the Chinese students. Um, ironically, one of the people that I then met was an American student who happened to be at University of Florida where I was at. <laughs> we only met via the internet because he was a physics graduate student, nuclear physics graduate student, so he had all these uh, uh, fellow students that were Chinese, and so he got involved with them, and he was involved in the student government there and, and, and all that, and so you know, all of these things started falling into place, and I organized, uh, you know, about 158 different cities and universities around the world, actually, um, eventually, not knowing a thing about what I was doing. You know, I, I'll never forget, a, a week after I first got this thing rolling, uh, my girlfriend was, her parents lived in Orlando, I went down to visit her, and I said, while I'm there, I'm going to go to the University of Central Florida, which actually had more of an American student uh, uh, organized uh, effort going on for the Chinese. I mean, at the University of Florida, it was really just the Chinese students until I got involved. Um, and so I and I'd never been to the University of Central Florida. I certainly didn't know who these people were. So I'm driving my girlfriend back home at six in the morning. Then I'm going to go find the University of Central Florida. And on the radio, you know, and this is something I learned, you know, if you just do it, synchronicity happens. Things fall into place. So so and, and also don't be afraid of making mistakes because, 
so what? You know, if if you don't accomplish anything, you don't accomplish anything. But more likely than not, you're going to accomplish something, and you never know how much. But so I'm driving her back to her parents' house, and on the radio it says that the students are going to actually have a a rally in the middle of the campus. So now I have a way of finding because I didn't know who their names were. I didn't know how to find them. I was just going to do it. So I get there and I tell them my idea, and they're like, "Okay, you're going to speak, right?" Now I had never given a public speech in my life, and I'm a very shy person. Although people don't believe me uh, because of my public persona since then, uh, but so I said, "Okay, yeah, I'll give a speech." And then apparently I was actually pretty good at speaking, and people said, "Yeah, let's get involved," and they got on board and helping out. Uh, and then they said to me, he said, well, next week we're going up to uh, Chicago to the Amnesty International Annual General Meeting. Do you want to come with us? And I said, sure. So me and a friend of mine who was sleeping on my couch, uh, uh, he was sleeping on my, on my reclining chair for the summer. Uh, he went with me and uh, we actually took over the meeting and we actually, um, uh, you know, we turned it into, I mean, they didn't want to touch Tiananmen Square uh, and, they, they, and they and they and they and they were just this was just coming after Live Aid, and the, so there was a there was a split in Amnesty on to how much activism beyond just letter writing and how they could keep the students that the young population that got involved with that, and we actually wrote a memorandum uh, statement that they began using to actually keep students involved, um, and then during all that with the with the student groups the, the Na- United States Student Association and the National Association. Association of Graduate and Professional Students, who, of course, literally were right next door to me in the same university, the organizers, but we didn't know each other until we found each other on these early days of the Internet, pre-World Wide Web, you know, uh, news groups and IRC and, uh, you know, Pine, you know, email, you know, mostly a lot of stuff with, uh, with, with Unix still. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we actually had we were involved with uh, Nancy Pelosi, who at the time was a freshman congresswoman uh, from San Francisco, which, of course, with a large uh, Asian population. Um, and so she actually had a bill to protect the students and scholars who had protested from having to be forced to go back on their J-1 visas. And it was stuck in the House of Representatives because the conservatives uh, like Hatch and, and, uh, and others, um, Jesse Helms, they wanted to have abortion language attached to it so it couldn't get out. So we, we took these, these, this, this giant protest that I organized around the country and in other parts of the world, and we got you know hundreds of thousands of signatures for a petition to get the Pelosi bill out. And then I flew to D.C. with these petitions. And then I'm, next thing I know, I'm testifying before the House Judiciary Committee. Literally, I mean, three weeks before this, I'd never given a public speech. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm meeting people on the plane, you know, that are from the Chinese embassy, and they know my name, which was pretty scary. Um, and, or, or I'm sitting in a bar and I'm talking to a person, and it just happens to be a person I needed to meet and needed to find. They had a resource or they had a, a connection um, and so, like I said, you know, I learned to just do it. And um, while I was there in Washington, D.C., the Chinese students that I was working with there, which were mostly based in the University of, 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 of um, Maryland, uh, you know, they said that they were – because they had this, again, this internet uh, community – of, of scholars around the world using the internet to communicate. They said that eight of the leaders had just escaped um, and they were, uh, they were denied access to the United States. They were on their way to Paris, but they wanted to get in the U.S. Would I stay in Washington and help to get them into the U.S.? And I said, well, sure, I'll, I'll do it. You know, again, not knowing anything about what I was doing. Um, and yes, sure enough, about a week later, we got them into the U.S. And then I had them bringing them around Congress and we were meeting at, uh, unfortunately, it was almost almost only conservative think tanks and, and Republicans that were supporting us, uh, except for the president. Uh, I actually wound up turning, we tried to get a meeting with the president and uh, then they offered us Dan Quayle and I turned that down. Uh, and I'm proud of turning that down. I, I did make a mistake because I turned down the Secretary of State. I said we will meet with the Secretary of State, but we're never going to meet with Dan Quayle. But then they called us on a Thursday morning and said we can meet with the Secretary of State in an hour. But in an hour, we were supposed to be at the uh, Center for Strategic and International Studies for a thing that we had going on for for a week. And so I had to decline that. That was probably a mistake. Um, 
and and so you know so that's that was my involvement um you know and they started teaching me chinese and then they were they were great you know we were on the voice of america they had me on the voice of america talking and uh you know, they all of the Chinese restaurants and the, were competing to have these great feasts for us. It was a it was an exciting period of time uh, with a tragic event around it, and um, you know, it's it's part of how I am, who I am today. That that's amazing, Charlie. I, I just want to for people uh, watching live and in the archives. This is uh, on screen is images from Ferguson tonight. Uh, being uh, Sunday, uh, October uh, 12th, now the 13th. Uh, that's live in Ferguson on the bridge. Uh, there's just a handful of protesters there. Uh, and it's and it, I'm, I'm glad that they're all in the media scrum, uh, scrum together. Uh, but they're, uh, I'm glad they're, like, they're shining a light in the cop's face. Take that, you yeah. fuckers. Uh, I, no, I mean, Tiananmen Square, I mean, they changed a lot. Um uh, you know, uh, and I'm glad, you know, you were helping as much as you could. Uh, we are. Any other? Because I, I only bring it up uh, all weekend because cause of the, you know, you could have a situation here where because of that, they're not declaring martial law. They might use this to declare martial law. It is a Game 7 series with St. Louis and San Fran and the uh, National League Championship. Uh, next phase is the World Series Finals. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, comments there, um, Punk Boy, uh, Charlie? Well, let me just add one more thing about that. You know, the other thing was the connection to Hong Kong and the Hong Kong students, particularly since they know they were they knew that they were likely going to be given back to China in a couple of years after that by England. Uh, but uh, you know, the Hong Kong students were very, very, very active and involved, and they were providing fax machines and you know brick-sized cell phones to, and that's how a lot of that communication was getting out of Tiananmen Square. But it's just amazing to see in the 25 years the technological revolution and the tools we have today because I don't know what it would have been like if we had that back then. Uh, but one more comment, and then I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. But look at look at those cops, and look in particular to the ones who are banging their sticks on the ground. Those are your troublemakers. Those are the ones that are on adrenaline high right now, and they're ready to go get some meat. And that's scary, and that's yes. inappropriate. And let's not forget, enough of them are drugged up uh, on coke and uh, who knows other stuff. Yeah, I'll be right back. Uh, go ahead and, and, and continue talking. I'll be right. I can run the bathroom real quick before things get crazy. All righty. Uh, Punk Boy, any comments about what you've seen on screen in Ferguson there? Punk Boy? ER. All right. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. In the bathroom. Sorry, sorry. Oh, and Charlie, coast to coast flush. So on screen, go. we, we got right, Can you hear me now? Perfect. Oh, sorry, let me turn. I, I had my, I took my phone in the, in the bathroom with me, so I was watching it. <laughs> nice. so that's why I heard you going back to me, and I was like, oh shit, I gotta get back there. <laughs> oh shit, uh, I'm stop, shit. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, yeah, well, I was done with that part, luckily. <laughs> Well, what we got uh, on screen is Revolutionary Z. Yeah, I've been. Oh, that's it's it's John's uh, stream. Okay, so so he better keep his ass like safe uh, there. They're in a nice tight press scrum. They got a lot of. Yeah, I've been seeing. It looks like officials and stuff in the front of it. Let's see, and the crowds are merging. The two. Mar I've heard from Rise. They there's about four thousand people in mar two marches that have merged into four thousand plus. Um, it, it's it's. I can't believe it's not getting more coverage like uh, nationally. I mean, I mean, I haven't really looked at my shit today yet. What is my phone going crazy for? Ugh, I hate Facebook. No matter how many times I tell it not to give me like vibrations and noises for every fucking thing, like it still does. I hate their app. I used to ignore Facebook completely, but now that I'm trying to keep up a show page, like I, it makes you keep two apps on. Like there's a Pages app separate from the regular app, so it's like ugh, it wants to take over the phone, and I, I don't want to let it. 
That's Facebook for you. Yeah. Well, you you don't have an iPhone, but if you happen to, for some satanic reason, decide to get one, uh, they have a much better app for for iPhone only. That's called Paper, and it sort of uses like design elements of looking more like a real newspaper and whatnot to basically bring in your news feed and it's it's got elements in it that let you basically replace the regular Facebook app with something that's, that's really beautifully like if you go to YouTube and just look up you know Facebook paper or whatever the little interview was it's really really cool looking Charlie Charlie you've got an iPhone you tried the the, the Facebook paper app you heard it you know about it they didn't do much press when it came out but it's it's really pretty from everything I've seen and it's only on the iPhone the iPhone which app uh, Facebook uh, has like a separate division that they actually made an app for Facebook that uses design. Like it's an actual designed app called Paper, and it it it's just really pretty. And it and it sort of instead of just being your your newsfeed being this long stream of headlines with a little bit of comments on it. Oh wait it wait wait hold turned, on we're down we're down again we're down again hold on okay but yeah it takes every story and gives it a full screen sort of effect and so if it's a large picture that doesn't all fit on the screen tilting your phone the gyroscope sort of uses it to like pan around the larger picture oh, and cool. stuff oh i've got to like, find it's, that it's, yeah. yeah it's it's i wish they had it on android because i would definitely use that over the traditional facebook app which looks like they've just crammed down that huge busy busy like website page into like something that's way too busy on your on your mobile uh, yeah it's very hard to do a lot of stuff on the on that did little, you see that on, on screen what, they, no, I just saw. They, what the happened? The cops moved back. Oh, they moved back. Okay, cool. Oh, let me let me turn my thing live again. I've been keeping my live stream page like paused because oh, so they're marching forward and the cops are going back now. Uh, you've also got the little tab on the side that still says "idle, no more teaching," or is that a coming? That's an upcoming thing. No, that was from the past. Uh, what it is is. Uh, when we went down briefly, if you're watching this in the archives, everything's fine. But uh, the uh, when it uh, lost signal and we went li uh, not live briefly and, and the offline content reel kicked in, the overlay, which is what you're watching. But Fred will, will get on that and remove that overlay. Because um, right now, because I'm mirroring, I can't see what's on our uh, stream. But we're back. Okay. Yeah, we got twenty-two viewers on your on your <clears throat> on your page, and then way more from the other mirrors. I'm sure. Holy shit! Z's got twelve or twelve hundred on there right now. And that's who you're mirroring, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Z, yeah. and he's had a total of one hundred twenty thousand viewers tonight alone. Well, he's going to have a good report back when the next show he can come on. <laughs> yes, he was on. Uh, Reb was on uh, two weeks ago with Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're at it, uh, I've I've been talking uh, since Wednesday with Bella and Base M and a few other live streamers. And stay tuned. We're going to be interviewing them uh, live. More extended uh, interviews with them. I think S Skype has turned off my video. It says you've reached your four-hour limit for group video calls. What? What? We're exactly That's what it at four hours. Says to me. And it just popped up and it said, you've reached your four-hour limit for this group video call. Goodbye. I'm not seeing anything but, but the pictures of us on the Skype, but, cause I'm watching, but I'm watching the live stream anyway. Well, it, it, turned, it turned my video on. and it, well, Let's see. Oh, I think I can bring it back up now. <laughs> Did it go back on? I turned it back on. Oh, your audio's it, it, fine. It, it, it changed to a picture. You're in on productions now. Oh, that's just what I left my video feed at. Hold on. There. I can spin. Spin around. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's there on again. Mm -hmm. So that's weird. It just automatically shuts your video off after four hours. I have Skype Premium. That's the first time ever that's ever popped up. I, it, it, well, I don't understand it. I don't, so that's probably why. No, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, all it did was force me to hit the little video button again. All right. So that that's actually a Palestinian uh, Anon 
spinning ball thing. I used to have it as my avatar on Twitter, but then they stopped letting you use animated GIFs for uh, for avatars. Yeah. Somehow I was able to do it through mobile once and got it back up there, but <clears throat> but once I changed it, I was not able to use that little loophole after they updated their Twitter app. And I, I wish I, I wish I could have seen a little bit more about what caused the police to back up because you had you you clearly had uh, a couple of those a, 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 you know a small part maybe about five to eight percent of them out there doing the tapping the thing even though they weren't being directed to do the coordinated tapping and that yep. that meant that they were they were they were those those individuals were getting ready for a fight. And then they've backed them off. I mean, that was a wise move on whoever backed them off, but I'm not was, sure. Was was that one guy in the front, the the alderman who was always out there, was his name French or something? Antonio French. No, that did not look like him to me, the the guy that was there. Like, that didn't look like you know, That guy had a very community short leader hair. or a politician or somebody, though. I mean, he looked sort yeah. of like he was up there in official capacity or... Or something. Well, he was, he, was, a, he was dressed very nice, you know, not casually, but sort of like almost formally. But uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I wouldn't think that somebody would dress like that if they were just going out for protests. I mean, unless he's like a preacher or something like that. No, he could have been a preacher. I mean, he may just be an organizer who figured that he would approach it that way. Because uh, they've definitely gotten much, much more organized uh, this past week than they've been thus far. Plus, you, you might have missed it when you went to the washroom, Charlie, but Rise uh, posted on our live chat that uh, there's about 4,000 people. Two large marches merged. So now they're dealing with 4,000 people. So, yeah. So the media yeah. were like, well, they've spread out the, the coverage with the live streamers. It, it's so good that Vlad is down there to offer a lot of assistance because you know they're getting more organized the live streamers i'm uh you know walking onto that bridge alone as a tight press scrum uh, of civilian journalists the cp peacekeepers. uh i mean it looks it looks great it looks absolutely amazing <coughs> and and i might point out that you notice that uh, reb who's working with mustafa at argus radio is usually streams at the new.livestream.com account but uh, they're not working together anymore. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know about uh, what happened there, but in part, there's a huge <coughs> troll problem at new.livestream.com, which does not allow you to have mods, which yeah, that is yeah. huge. So he had major troll problems. And, uh, and uh, so I thought, for one, he was moving here. Uh, how come he's not moving? Uh, no, no, no. What's wrong with him with, with, with him and Mustafa? I, I don't really want to get into it because it's uh, it. Well, it, Mustafa was outed in the same fashion that people went after me about something in his past, and we don't know what the truth is or what it is about it. It's the kind of thing that he doesn't really want to be openly talking about in the first place, and that I don't blame him about the context. But I mean, it may be something very bad. It may be something that's taken out of out of context and out of proportion and distorted. Uh, and and uh, but the but the but the problem with Z had was is that you know Z moved out there and didn't know about this skeleton in in the closet and sort of took him by surprise and and so you know feel the, felt a little bit uh, needing to to distance. Uh, I, I called Mustafa yesterday and I talk, I tried to well I, I left him some messages and said look man you know talk you know call me talk to me let me know what's going on uh, uh, because no matter what I, I don't really care about his past and even how bad it may be I care about his present and uh, you know particularly if, if he really did something wrong if the, if he made amends for that or what I don't think that should carry on with you. Uh, it also can be something that may be distorted, uh, but I believe he's sincere in in this in this movement and the effort. Um, and I and I think Z does Z does too. But Z just had to he had to, to distinguish himself from not getting caught up in that since it was take because it was taken by surprise. And so that's 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 all I really want to. Yeah, no, go into no, that's good because we don't want to fan the flames. And and right. I agree with you, Mustafa. At Argus Radio, salt of the earth, you know, stellar, you know, because he, locally, uh, 
you know, he is the pillar of strength. He is the one that has the experience locally. Because before Mike Brown got, a, uh, you know, gunned down by the uh, Ferguson PD on August 9th, he was the only live streamer there. And how yeah. many dozens upon dozens of new ones. So, yeah, and, I can see why they were streaming back then. So who? Uh, there's, yeah, there's yeah. Uh, uh, the one who disappeared but, for a bit that everyone was worried yeah. about. Well, he also well, and then there, then something came out about him too, and uh, and that's there's been there's all of these things have been happening, which is a real it's 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 difficult and disappointing and, and all that, and uh, it's expected because uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a strategy of divide and conquer, you know, where uh, it, it 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 absolutely is, it absolutely is. Yeah, and I'm sure it all eventually. Uh, boil over and the timing of it, you know, is also very important. You know, uh, we've seen that before, you know, they've tried with me, but it doesn't take, you know, uh, it's just, uh, we've got to just stay the course and uh, they'll deal with it. And I think they'll be fine, um, you know, and, uh, but they're all here and it's good to also have experience come in uh, i'm glad that vlad got there i believe it was uh, wednesday night uh, he got there yeah. i heard and uh you know it's good to see tim pool there uh i and see bella. that I, uh, luke. luke you see you got luke luke, luke and bella luke, but bella's great because bella's got that voice and that attitude <laughs> oh man i can't uh, wait to interview her you know and that's all coming soon um uh, you know, I've lined up a whole bunch of interviews with Bella and Basem uh, and 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 a whole bunch of others. It's just yeah, a Basim, question of, he's, of, of he's, timing. He's learned a lot in a very short time. I know. But just like I went with you before this show to go through all your channel settings, he needs yeah. that. Because yeah. trolls on his are mm -hmm. like over the top. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, so he shut down his uh, chats. Um, right, and he, and he's been bouncing around. He he left live stream and then went over to okay. UStream, but then got frustrated with it, and he went back to uh, Bambu Bamuser. Uh, he he's been live streaming at UStream this week. Oh, he went back to UStream again. Okay. Yeah, today he, he was live streaming really a concert. Uh, okay. He's got a kick-ass camera. I, I love his work. Uh, you know, yes, Bella from Oakland, I believe. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah uh, Rebel, uh, Revolutionary Z, Jan Ziegler, he's from Chicago, yeah. I believe. Just outside, yeah. And then Tim, you know, came out of Occupy Wall Street, but he's originally from Chicago. You know, Luke is from New York, you know. Vlad, well, he bounces around between Tunisia, <laughs> Spain, and New York, and everywhere. Vlad the Imperial. He's a Russian spy. No, he's not. Vlad is amazing. I, I see a lot more organization of the live streamers because I've been following this, you know, a lot. And what I've seen in terms of the live streamers, uh, like the other two nights, there was they were all of them hanging out at Ferguson PD uh, HQ, and then with the same with the same view. I, I, I you know, and, and right and back at Shaw and South uh, St. Louis. People were getting paper, pepper sprayed and maced and, uh, and and whatnot and arrested and no one was there and and, right. and and it's like so it seems like I'm guessing here but Vlad's influence and, and even with him and uh, and Luke and, yeah. and Bella and, and and others they're a lot more organized tonight which is really and and and, and 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 Reb 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 and Reb and talking a lot about that and Mustafa at month uh, and uh, they've been other people about out. when you're out there, oh, sorry, you know, sorry. strategically try to capture whoa, different whoa, points whoa, of view. Whoa. Oh, I, I, I said Reb and I uh, and Mustafa have been talking for the past month and a half about, uh, uh, oh, we've lost the signal. Oh, we're back. Okay, Reb, Reb and I and Mustafa have been talking for the past month and a half because they've been on the ground uh, with some of these new new guys and, and saying, you know, uh, make sure you get out there and cover different angles. 
and different sides of what's going on and people consciously watching the cops, not just the, you know, the main center of attention at the time and, and, and spreading around that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so it's been in the works and I, yeah, I certainly think with the, uh, the more, the other veteran streamers getting there this weekend, uh, that's really been a, a, a real plus. Yeah. And, um, but what I see with the, the Ferguson live streamers is training is really, really badly needed. It's one thing, the technical stuff, like what I went through with you uh, earlier today uh, and stuff. But then there's the art, the theory. You know, I've been writing live stream theory for 13 years. It started back in my homeland of Iceland in Reykjavik. And, and you know, the art production techniques, some of what we just discussed uh, just a few uh, minutes ago and stuff. And, uh, and, and it's like, how do, how do you cover everything? This is, this reminds me of the old days of Occupy, you know, uh, especially say in New York, uh, which yeah. Vlad and Tim and Luke are expert in, right? When you have a huge crowds and you have a large amount, you know, there's tactics of how, you know, groups of live streamers, three or four, are operating like a wolf pack. And, you know, yeah, everyone's yeah, covering right. everybody's mm -hmm. back. So if you have like four or five teams of, yeah. you know, three or four uh, packs, everyone protected, and that's just the live streamers. Then they're live tweeting a lot. You know, I mean, yeah. a Ferguson, hashtag Ferguson October was uh, trending number one last night for the longest time. Um, and uh, so, and they're using Twitter, you know, and the coordination between these people and the mods at home, you know, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, what it's done for me since Wednesday, it's inspired me to actually finally fucking learn Twitter. I have had that account since <laughs> December 2010 and the way these guys are using it. So now... I've been immersed in Twitter. I'm no, I popped my cherry. I'm no longer a Twitter virgin, you know. Woohoo! Uh, I used a condom, yes, but uh, <laughs> so much better than Facebook, isn't it? But you know, uh, it's amazing uh, working with Twitter, and uh, it, it, it's it's the opposite of Facebook. Uh, I haven't even been on Facebook since, uh, and it's really, really beautiful uh, coordinating the two. Um, you know, at one point we peaked at over 50 viewers just on our uh, live stream. We were restreamed by three. Um, and um, so it's amazing. Let's talk about the coordination of the live streamers on the ground and then the use of social media. In, well, yeah, let me let me just let me add one thing before we do before we get into that detail. Oh, my God, what's going on here? They're going into some building. But uh, Carlos, Carlos Miller is out there. Unfortunately, I was going to be doing the live streaming from the pair of us. And I was supposed to sort of be, you know, uh, showing him around and introducing him to some of the people that I've been working with. So he's sort of on his own there. And he's got a nice quality uh, Canon uh, camera, just like I've got. Um, and uh, but he's just, you know, getting high quality photos and video, uh, but no streaming. I was going to do the both. If you want to stream from a DSLR like that, they have what's called a live shell. You'll need a, a yeah. Wi-Fi hotspot separate, and the live shell takes the HDMI, the mini HDMI uh, feed from from a DSLR, and will stream. That's what uh, Luke has probably been streaming from that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get to the point of doing. I'm going to have to wait till it's I can raise a little bucks money. A show. Oh, that's it. Oh, well, well my, not mine. Mine is um, not a DS. It's a it's a it's Canon. A, uh, uh, it's a not a DSLR. It's a video camera. But it's got an HDMI out. Oh, it's got H. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's got HDMI yeah. output. Yeah. So yeah, so this thing has either I think it has both the RCA jacks and the HDMI input. Um, oh, okay. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Occupy Liberty One. Um, James, who was one of the streamers here in San Francisco, he wrote them and. Basically, they sent him one for free as long as he promised to keep mentioning the name of it on stream and in his social media. So okay. I, I, I don't know if they'll still do that, but I would try to get in touch with the live show people who gave him one. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I hadn't thought of it till just now because I didn't have a DSLR back then, so it was kind of irrelevant to me. But now I do, so I, maybe I should get in touch with them. But I, I, the other, I don't have the any other current streaming stuff to, to bolster it. So. Wait, wait, the other wait, boxes wait. used to be $400, but now they're $800. So I, that was like a, too much oh, for me, me to get. Let me see okay, if the wait, live wait, show is wait, cheaper. Wait. Okay, wait. Okay, because traditionally, if you're live streaming from a video camera, you need a Teradek uh, box or with live stream the uh, HD broadcaster, and then you got to get a signal to it. And there's three ways to get a signal to that box, which goes into the hot shoe, either with a I USB the, uh, stick, tethered, tethered to your uh, your uh, cell phone or, you know, Ethernet if you're at home. But how does this live shell thing actually work? Does it replace the Teradek uh, cube? Uh, well, that's that's the live stream's officially branded one. Um, let me put a link in the chat here. So it's, it's a big long link that you'll probably. Oh, never. Hold on. That's because I didn't I didn't click through from the Google link. Hold on. That's the big long encrypted link. Here is the shorter one directly to the site. Paste. Come on, paste. This one should bring you directly to it. So it's this thing. It's two hundred and fifty. I was mistaken. Um, that's still that, that's I, I can afford that. Uh, this one is U stream compatible AV HDMI and USB interfaces stereo mic input independently adjustable volume control works with wired or wireless network compact portable battery powered integrated tripod mount NTSC and PAL compatible live video to the web and it's got like half a dozen different services that you can stream to from it. But you still need to get an internet signal to that box, correct? It needs it needs Wi-Fi or uh, or it's got a, a RJ45 I think is what you know a, a LAN connector basically. Mm. Uh, an Ethernet and and you could it's probably got a USB so if you use a USB uh, 3G or 4G stick you could also do that right. And, and hopefully that it charges by five and a half volt USB so that you can put it on a battery thing. Otherwise, you're limited by how much battery power that thing can actually hold at a time before you have to plug it into the wall. Yes, uh, I, would I, hope, I would hope that, I would hope that it's uh, something that will allow you to use one of those portable power packs. Otherwise, you got to get one of the really, really expensive ones that has an AC on it. Yeah, yeah. There's some backpacks that have that now that are meant to be able to, to charge your, your laptop when you put them in the backpack. Wow, look at that, the, the amount of people. Wow. So and they're, they're, they're at the university now. 704 by 528 resolution live streaming at 1.5 megabits. Oh, oh, no PC oh, yeah. required. Works, works with Nikon, Nikon Live, and R, uh, real-time media, or the RTMP, uh, real-time media protocol, something like that. Battery, so, or, uh, AC, battery or AC powered. So for the people watching in the archives, uh, it's called a live shell. What? Uh, it's Cerevo, C-E-R-E-V-O is the company. And it's uh, so Cerevo USA live shell video streaming device. And I'm looking at it here on, I always want to call them Bell and Howell because that's what B&H always meant to me. But it's bhphotovideo.com. Uh, they've got it there. That's just what came up when I searched for it on Google. Um, yeah, two hundred fifty they, bucks. Got, yeah. yeah, they've got a seven hundred dollar Pro one, but you don't really need the Pro one. Um, and so what? Right. Uh, what? What James has? Uh, he's called into the show a couple of times. He's the guy who's a veteran. He usually calls in about three quarters of the way through, um, and his phone is always cutting out when he's talking because he does a voiceover IP thing. Um, but he's got one of these little like action cams, like not you know the same idea as a, as a uh, GoPro, but like one of those little tubular looking ones that he keeps on his shoulder. And so he's yeah. like streaming from, from that a lot of times and people don't even know he's streaming because he's not holding anything. It's just mounted up on his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Been the, that name and model number on the live chat. Uh, well, I put a link directly to it there. If that BH. Here, here's, I got the link. Yeah, here you go. Cerebro. Ah. Live it got most of it that show. time. Yeah, I think because it only it only went to where the semicolon was because for some reason they've got a semicolon in there. You are yeah. it stopped it stopped at that Cerevo live shell. It's about two hundred and fifty bucks there. Features live shell dashboard. That must be the the configuration page or something. Amazon high quality live. Let's see how much Amazon selling it for nowadays. Two eighty nine with free shipping. Yeah, get it from BH. 
not and not not eligible for prime. The pro one is seven hundred. Yeah, that's a little outrageous. You'd do better off do better off getting the. Uh, Yeah, try getting try getting enough bandwidth on your on your hotspot to do a 720 while you're out walking around in between going from cell to cell. It's not going to happen. If you're doing it from like, oh look, so uh, it looks like Logitech makes a broadcaster thing for 250. Oh really? Also really? For broadcasting HD video streaming, call, calling, recording. Yeah, I think I do. I do remember seeing this before. It looks like a little weird handheld thing. Hold on, I'll put this. The link up to the Amazon page for this, and it cuts off too with the equal sign. <laughs> yeah, weird. So it looks like you can get that one on Prime for two forty four. Want it by Tuesday? Order within twelve hours and get one day shipping at checkout. The world's first Wi Fi webcam, highly versatile handheld wireless web camera for Mac, iPad, and iPhone. One touch live broadcast. Oh, that's actually a, that's Mac. actually a camera. That's yeah, just the camera must, as well. Which must go through software in your iPad or something. Multi-view video calling, effortlessly switch scenes on Skype between your built-in Mac webcam and the Aim Anywhere broadcaster. It's sort of weird. It's got like a handle beneath it and a camera sort of sitting on the top. Yeah. But it, it goes directly to compatible with your stream, yeah. Yeah, well, what I've got that I've been using for my webcam tonight, somebody gave me because they replaced it with some newer version of, not not even of this thing, but they got another brand. But I have one of these uh, Orbit Logitech cams, which have the little motor in it, so it does the pan, tilt, zoom remotely. But it doesn't mm-hmm. use a standard PT, what is it, PTL uh, is what they call a camera like that. It doesn't use standard PTL commands, so I can't use any of the like remote monitoring software to be able to move it when I'm not home. It, ha- it has to be running the, the Logitech proprietary software, and that's the only place to, that you can move it. So if I'm sitting at my computer able to, like, manipulate that thing, then what's the point of having it if I can't manipulate it remotely? It's, like, silly. But it has amazing low light, which is why I like it. And uh, and it does have optical zoom and a Carl Zeiss lens on it. Hmm. And it Dual camera doesn't do recording. HD, but it's pretty clear webcam wow. controller there. What else is there? Oh, there's video. So yeah, there's also, let me see if I can get it to do it. If I t- turn on, where's my camera properties? <coughs> yeah, people can't, people can't see me now, but, uh, so if I hit the properties and bring up the, uh, the driver software here what it does do is there's like a follow my face feature or something and so when you click that like when, as soon as you go off the screen it's supposed to like move the camera to follow you it's sort of trying to do it now i have it zoomed in pretty close so hopefully it'll work like, off screen nope it didn't follow me ah, there it goes i think it's having trouble because i have a hat on Oh, it doesn't let me zoom when the fall of my face is on. Exposure down. Yep. Four hours, 27 minutes, 42 seconds. Just one. John, I have to do one quick thing. We're approaching the four and a half hour mark. I'm gonna quickly like like save this, and literally be back in ten seconds. Let me just save <coughs> All this. Right, okay, I'll be right right back. Hold on, folks.